Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to the Board of Selectmen regular meeting of August 11th, 2021 at 5 p.m. Materials for the, uh, for the meeting may be viewed on our website. It's listed on the agenda, along with anyone who would like to join via WebEx. We are remaining virtual, virtual at this point. In-person attendance will not be permitted, nor will the public be allowed to offer public comment testimony or other participation unless specifically stated in the notice. And there is a way to get in if you wish to speak under public comments um, listed on the agenda. First of all, before we begin, because we are virtual, I must call the roll call individually. Joe Crisco. Aye. Beth Heller. Aye. Paul Kyriakos. Aye. Thank you. David Lober. I'm here. Okay, thank you. Muted. <laughs> Pregnant pause there, okay. Shayla McCreven. Here. Thank you. Here. David Vogel. Here. From a parts unknown. <laughs> That's so fun. Um, Administrative Officer, Director of Finance, Tony Genovese. Here. Assistant Administrative Officer, Betsy Yagla. Here. Town Council, Gerald T. Weiner. Here. And our clerk, Geraldine Shaw. Here. And Media Specialist, Pool Ford is muted, but joining us for sure. Okay, thank you. That is over. Um, item one on the agenda is the first selectman's remarks. Um, good evening again, and welcome to the August 11th, 2021 regular meeting. Last Friday, Lieutenant Governor Susan Bicewitz came to Woodbridge with our state legislators, Senator Cabrera and Senator Maroney and Representative Wielander and Bond Commission member, State Representative Dorinda Bohr to celebrate the State Bond Council's Commission's $300,000 award to the town of Woodbridge to complete the renovations of the senior center. Our human services staff members took everyone on a tour of the current facility. As you know, this was originally included in our list of projects for bonding, and now we are able to remove that request. I'm so pleased that our seniors and others who use the center will now have the fresh, fresh modern, modern, safe, welcoming, air-conditioned space they deserve. I thank everyone involved in helping us move this forward. As I told you last month, we had several inquiries from developers interested in presenting their ideas and proposals for the former Country Club of Woodbridge property. It just all of a sudden happened, it just they just sprung up. In addition to the proposal on the agenda this evening, which we actually previewed yesterday in a draft PowerPoint, I have heard from two others that are also interested. New England Brewery is interested in discussing options for the property. And I've also been approached by a group that want to create a driving range and a three hole golf course. They're not sure of the acreage they might need at this point. Both have been encouraged to give us a proposal. And as soon as we have something in writing from either or both groups, I will bring them to you for discussion. The Delta variant has increased the spread of the virus, especially among those not vaccinated. It has been relentless, highly contagious, more deadly, and unfortunately, there is now a dramatic rise in cases in children. Last month at this time, the daily positivity rate in Connecticut was hovering about 0.5%. It's now regularly two and sometimes even over three. On Friday, August 6th, it was at 3.52, and today I just checked, it's at 3.15. Given the new CDC guidelines strongly suggesting that people now go back to wearing masks indoors, we have changed the town's policy once again to require masks inside town buildings, regardless of vaccination status. I have said it again and again, prevention is critical to protect your health and health of others. Please get vaccinated. There will be no more in-person board and commission meetings beginning next Monday until further notice. Getting vaccinated and wearing a mask is the best way to get out of this pandemic and to keep our community safe. If you're not willing to do it for yourself, please do it for the children who are not yet eligible for the vaccine. I recently learned that municipalities are not allowed to use no excuse absentee ballots for referenda, only for elections through November. There is some confusion about that. Maybe at the end, Jerry, you can just address that but we think it's, it is not allowed. It's only for elections at this point. Um, sorry, I, I lost my space here. Since COVID rates have been rising so quickly, I would like to propose that we table the bonding referendum for these projects 
that we've been working so hard to finalize. I will propose, and it's obviously up to the Board of Selectmen, that this item be removed from tonight's agenda. I want to see the direction of the COVID numbers before the go down before the board schedules any non-emergency special town meeting and our referendum. It is very important to me that we keep our residents safe. I'm also concerned, quite frankly, about spending money. If we get into another COVID rise, we may need that money, emergency funding for other to, to answer to the COVID issue. On a lighter note, we again received notice that the Gov Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada, also known as GFOA, has awarded, once again, the Certificate of Achievement for Excellent in Financial Reporting to the Town of Woodbridge for our comprehensive annual financial report for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2020. This means we have met the program's high standards, which includes demonstrating a constructive, quote, spirit of full disclosure, unquote, to clearly communicate its financial story and motivate potential users and users groups to read the report. The certificate of achievement is the high of achievement is the highest form of recognition in the area of governmental accounting and financial reporting, and its attainment represents a significant accomplishment by a government and its management. Congratulations once again, and thank you to Tony Genovese, our finance director, superior, and our board of finance. Can we do a virtual clap? <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Tony. On August 4th, I attended the Woodbridge Dog Park Cooperative's post-pandemic pizza and puppy party at the dog park. It was a lot of fun, well attended, and it was a great way for people to socialize safely. On August 5th, I attended the Rotary Scholarship Award Ceremony, three deserving seniors, Rose Parody, Tasha Von Beden, and Madison Grieger, received scholarships for $1,000 each from this organization toward their college education. Since we have so many new board and commission members, I'm going to give a quick review on our liaison role to other boards and commissions. I've had a couple of inquiries from commission chairs asking about the liaison roles. They wanted to make sure liaisons are properly included at their meetings. As you all know, liaisons are not members of the boards and commissions they are assigned to. It is at the sole discretion of the chair to include a liaison report, which should be limited only to matters that apply to the board. I called Tom Hennick at Freedom of Information to make sure this information that I'm giving you was correct. Liaisons do not vote on any commission matter and really should not participate in discussions unless called upon to do so. A liaison serves only to report back to our board on the activities of boards and commissions. Should a board or commission have an issue or need help with a matter, the chair should come to Tony or to me for assistance, or you can call me or Tony. Lastly, I'm sorry, someone talking? I don't know, okay, sorry. Lastly, I will ask Betsy to share her screen, which I have some lovely photos I took last Saturday at the transfer station. Two of our employees, Craig and Anthony, have turned the area into a glorious place of color and beauty. We receive calls all the time from residents complimenting them on the flowers and also the cleanliness of the station. I've sent them to you as I get them. It is simply magnificent. Thank you to them both, and I would encourage everyone to take a moment and take a ride to see this. It's worth the trip. And with that, thank you. Um, Fire Chief Sean Rowland asked to go next because he has a commitment this evening that he had to get to. So I would ask for Sean to be let in. Just a yep. minute, I have to take back the baton. No problem. <laughs> um, we have two items on the agenda. The Fire Association requests an action from the chief. Number one is the 9-11 Memorial, which is believe it or not, 20 years already on Saturday, September 11th of this year. And then the truck retreat on Sunday, October 31st, also Halloween. So when Sean hops in, we will, he will give us those and we can take action. And then um, I would suggest- Excuse me, Beth, I seem to be frozen. Just give me a moment. That's okay, I can keep talking. <laughs> um, also, we have an item on the agenda under Tony's report related to the air packs and the bid waiver. So I don't know if you had a chance to read it, but if Sean is here, we could ask him questions if you have now before he leaves for his other event. I remembered to do that, Tony. Pretty good, huh? Okay, so we'll just hang out until uh, Jerry lets Sean in. 
<clears throat> he said, you have to unmute me. He just sent me a text, Jerry. Betsy, did you hear that? No, I'm sorry. Sean just sent me a text that he needs to be unmuted. He's just been promoted, and he should now have the ability to unmute himself. Okay, there he is. <laughs> All right, you guys. Sorry about that. Sean, no problem. Wonders of technology here. So I, I introduced you, and um, I don't know if you could hear, but we talked about the 9-11 memorial first, and then the yep. truck retreat. So yep. you have the baton now. It's up to you. And then if anyone has any questions for the... Um, the air packs, et cetera, and the bid waiver before, because you'll be gone. Um, okay. If Tony questions, they could ask you at the end. So I guess item one is the 9-11 uh, memorial. I cannot believe it's been 20 years already. Yeah, so this year marks 20 years on uh, Saturday, 9-11. Uh, um, we're looking to do a ceremony uh, somewhat to what we did on the 10th anniversary when we did the reflecting pool out front. Um, we're going to be in contact with the PD over the next couple of days to... Uh, see if we can shut the road down, um, do the ceremony. We don't have cars passing by. And also that people can uh, space apart for COVID, feet apart um, while we do the ceremony. We're probably starting it somewhere around 8.30 to 9 o'clock in the morning. And it should last probably a half hour, 40 minutes uh, at the most. Um, and then there'll be coffee and after. We are going to open it up to the public. So if anybody wanted to come, uh, they're more than welcome to come. We have a bagpiper that day. Uh, we had to book that about a month and a half ago. And we're just going to try to make the ceremony nice. So we just want to let you guys know what we're looking to do here. And I think it'll be, you'll have COVID precautions and perhaps masking and things like that because it's outside. Yeah, absolutely. Right? If we, if people are more, if it uh, depends on where the CDC goes, if we have right. to mask outside and everything else, we will do that. Um, yeah. Otherwise, uh, doing it outside, we'll be able to social distance uh, on the road in, in front of the memorial. So I think it's something we don't want to pass up. It is 20 years uh, from that time. Sean, would you do me a favor, because we have new board members, and let them know about the piece that's in front of the reflecting pool? Yeah, so ten, interesting. a little over 10 years ago, we were able to get a piece of steel it's actually one of the girders from one of the towers that collapsed and we had to do a bunch of paperwork and apply for it and uh, were able to get it and i'm sorry can you just stand by one second we're having another call come in fire call okay yeah i don't know if it's okay. something bad yeah i know the guys went to pick it up Okay, sorry, we have two calls going on at the same time. Okay. Um, Does anyone have any questions for Fire Chief Roland about the 9-11 memorial? So just to go on about it, we were able to uh, uh, attain a piece of the steel from that. We reached out to Silver Petroselli, David Stein, and he actually, his firm did a design for it. We were able to follow the design and put the reflecting pool in with the help of a lot of people, which all came together on um, uh, for 9/11 uh, 10 years ago. So it's a big uh, it's a big thing for us in the town to have in town. It's lovely. So we don't have any questions. If everyone, if unless someone objects, I'll make a motion that we give approval to the. Uh, Woodbridge Volunteer Fire Association to for approval of the ceremony as described by the chief on September 11th at 8.30 in the morning. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Thank you. Any further questions or discussions? Hearing none, all in favor? I guess I, do I have to do the roll call, Jerry, or can I just uh, ask for people to raise hands? Jerry? If it's unanimous, you don't need a roll call. Okay, let's go with, let's do uh, all in favor, raise your hand. Aye. 
Hi. Looking at the screen and do we have, where's David Vogel, is he there? He's there. David, did, are you in and out? I think he did okay. He's David Vogel, are you okay with this? Is that an I, David Vogel? I think I heard an I, okay. Thank you, so that passes unanimously. And then uh, go ahead, Sean, take it away for the truck retreat. Yeah, so we're gonna, we wanna do truck retreat again. Um, we were hoping to do it back at the firehouse, but the way everything is going right now with COVID, it doesn't look too promising. So what we're looking to do is do almost exactly what we did last year by doing a drive-by, lining up the trucks on uh, Meeting House Lane and having to drive by basically from five to eight. It was a huge success. Um, so, um, I'm sorry, I got the radio going in the background here and I can't shut it. It's always something. Yeah. So, uh, we want to do the drive by again like we did last year. It was a huge, it was a huge success. Dan, we're, what we're doing, we have to cross 40. So. Yeah, yeah I, oh. I voted yes, if that matters. Okay, got it. I thought I heard it, but it was so hard. No worries. Okay. We're getting it done. Sean's in, middle, Sean's in the middle of two fire calls. We're having a real... I'm trying to get out of trying to get out of trying to get out of Okay, so um, does anyone have any questions about truck retreat at all? Okay, so I'll make a motion again that we approve the uh, truck retreat COVID safe on Meeting House Lane with the drive-by as we did last year. We'll leave the particulars up to the department. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Thank you, Joe Crisco. Um, any other discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I see David Vogel's votes aye already. Yay! Just please. Wait. I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose connection again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm so I'm everyone, sorry. Raise your hand. I had to shut off a radio. Please vote aye. Please raise your hand. Vote aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. aye. Okay. Wonderful. And um, does anyone have any questions for the chief? We won't do the vote now, but does anyone have any questions on the uh, the item? There was a funding request for a line item transfer for the air pass, which have to be replaced. And uh, 15 years, they didn't pass inspection, as I understand it. And then there's a second thing for a bid waiver because they're sole source vendor, which you go through all the time. So anyone have any questions for the chief? Hearing none, Sean, you're dismissed. Go back to your fire calls. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief. Okay, and with that, thanks, Sean. Good luck. Have a quiet night. This is it. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Good night. You can't hear me. Oh, that was fun. Okay. Dr. Bud, yay. Hi, Jonathan. I think you're on mute now. <laughs> Here we Hi, go. Beth. Hi Beth and everybody. How are you? Good evening. And uh, the floor is yours, my friend. Well, I won't take a lot of your time tonight. I'm just so thrilled. I was up in Hartford this morning. This was the commissioner's back to school meeting with the uh, superintendents of schools in Connecticut. And you've never seen such a happy group of people in your lives because we're always thrilled when school is about to start again. And our keynote speaker reminded us that that's because superintendents at heart are eternal optimists. You go into this profession because you see the potential in a little kindergarten student, and you know that student's going to be something great in 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And you do all of your work based on that. COVID-19 has challenged every district in Connecticut. But I'm telling you, Woodbridge is the best that's out there. And so we are so excited that our students are coming back. Our staff is coming back. Our new staff starts, believe it or not, on Monday, August 23rd, less than two weeks from today. And on Monday, August 30th, our students are back in person less than three weeks from today. We cannot do it without the strong support of the town leadership. I know we'll have great conversations this year like last year, but we are jazzed, energized, stoked, whatever word you want to use for school to start again 
in less than three weeks. Thanks for your great support, Beth, and all of you on the Board of Select. You're most welcome. Anyone have any questions for Dr. Budd? Okay, thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is liaison reports and I'll just start at the top, uh, Joe Crisco. Uh, thank you. You're most welcome. Uh, planning and zoning met on uh, Tuesday, July 6th. Uh, there was just general discussion, uh, but no action items. Uh, secondly, uh, Fire Commission met on Monday, June 21st. Um, there was just some questions. One was in regards to COVID-19 update. Uh, the chief uh, gave a summary and um, the chairman asked if there was any reports of the Delta variant in Woodbridge, and the chief responded that he has not been informed of any cases in town. In regards to the uh, operating budget, everything seems to be on pace. And also, in regards to the fire chief's report, um, in regards to the radio system, they recently completed the upgrade from analog to digital. Uh, this has vastly improved the quality and area covers. The sound is unbelievable, easy to understand, and very clear. And this will cover 100% of the town and beyond. And that's basically uh, most of the items for the commission, fire commission. In regards to the uh, police commission, the regular meeting was held on July 19th. Um, Chairman Burke welcomed the new commissioner, Michael Shambram. Then there was nominations and voting to elect officers for the new term. Commissioner Burke remains chairman. Andrew S. Edo Jr. was nominated and elected and will serve as the new vice chairman. Uh, I continue in regards to uh, other matters. Well, that was mostly uh, everything is uh, in place. The budget is okay, and there was some. Uh, Well, the traffic authority approved the outdoor circus show on September 18th. Uh, in regards to uh, criminal activity report, there was a homicide investigation uh, by our detectives in, in conjunction with State Police Central District Major Crime into the shooting death that occurred on June 7th at the Pease Road Playground, uh, which continues to be very active. On July 1st, they arrested a 23-year-old male connected with the, uh, the event. They also arrested a second uh, uh, suspect. On June 22nd, there was a bomb threat at the Jewish uh, Community Center. Uh, they are still looking into that to try to identify who the person was. Uh, basically, that's the major items uh, for uh, the police commission. Thank you. That's it. You're on mute, Beth. Paul Kirikos. <laughs> now Paul's on mute. <laughs> Sorry about that. Talk about an outdoor circus. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the Economic Commission meet, met on July 7th. Um, the, uh, um, they had done this very nice um, uh, market study on Woodbridge and what residents would like to see in town and so on. I think 
it's in our packet for this uh, this meeting, actually. Um, it was very informative, um, but the discussion ran around, you know, people seem to want to have uh, better bagel places and cafes and so on, but, you know, it, it seems a little odd that there are some efforts to bring those kind of places and they, they're not able to sustain the business here. Now, whether that's because of, you know, whether the individual business failed or, or the market just isn't there, we don't know. Um, and I think they did some very fine work. Um, it, it, it looks really interesting to look at. And uh, I think it'd be really important to get this in the hands of business people that want to establish a presence uh, in our locality. Um, and the rest uh, uh, was just introduction of new members and so on, because we've had some uh, changes in that commission. And, and that's about it for economic development. That it? That's it. Okay, thank you, Paul. Yep. Uh, David Lober. All right, I attended the Human Services um, Commission. Uh, they had elections, and Sarah Davison was re-elected chair, Pat Madden, vice chair, and Madden Clark Lofters and Holzman were elected to the Grievance Committee. Um, it's an application for a Youth Service Bureau grant for $14,186, was submitted for 2021. The application for the YSB grant for 2022 in the same amount, an enhancement grant of $8,537 will be submitted before the September deadline. Um, a program coordinator for youth services is being sought to fill a position left vacant by a resignation. Programming included an eighth grade graduation party, ice cream social, kickball tournament, upcoming events include a seventh grade welcome party August 25th. Uh, it's a center. Due to the pandemic, meal delivery has increased while other activities are rebuilding. A new freezer was purchased and gym windows were, gym windows were tinted to reduce heat intrusion. Donations include books and a partially completed dollhouse, which will become a crafts project. You know about the steep print. Um, CPR training for town employees. Our camp training for town employees will take place September 1st and 2nd. CPR, AED, and first aid training will be available at a later time. There'll be a flu clinic October 21st, 11 to 3. A living Treasure Award, 20, September 23rd. Um, and a, uh, a candidate is, is to fill the position of kitchen assistant is being sought. And Judy Young will continue as a Greater New Haven Transit District representative. And the Woodbridge Trans Center Transportation Program will be expanded to include Prospect. That's it for human services. Inland wetlands, um, in order to have the property of 15 and 21 Wolf Tree Drive are under cease and desist order concerning tree clearing and grading. It was determined that restoration work was needed and since the property bus land trust property, the land trust needs to review the proposed work. Um, the decision was postponed until the next meeting. A permit was approved for construction of a footbridge on 16 Old Still, Still Road. Um, Permit was approved to modify and transfer an existing permit from Wayne Luciani to Patrick Hardy for residential site development pending performance bond. The, the enforcement officer visited several properties under construction during heavy rains and determined erosion measure needed to be implemented for 157 and 165 Peck Hill Road, 15 and 21 Wolf Tree Drive, and 54, 60, and 66 Northrop. Those are the new sites that are being cleared. Also, the developer of 56 Northrop was advised that he lacked permits from the uh, Inland Wetlands Agency and that no further site work would be permitted until such permits were obtained. Um, Robert Blythe was re-elected chairman for four years, and Jack Curry was elected vice chair. On the Conservation Commission, they're all basically new members. Since the commission now consists almost wholly of new members, the role of the commission was discussed. It recommends properties for acquisition to be added to the conserved open space. The property use designation and property profile tool, which computes a numeric score for each property, has developed, been developed by the commission and will be used to evaluate each parcel. This tool will be presented to the board of selectmen for approval at a future date. 
Um, it was agreed that in keeping with the goal of eventually completing the greenway, the mapping of the existing greenway would be reviewed for the next meeting. And <laughs> as a point of personal privilege, I'd like to give an acknowledgement to a new business in town, the uh, town line farm stand on the old, I believe it's the old Hotchkiss farm on Baldwin Road and Greenway. And I can, oh, they, have, they have fresh um, produce and fresh cut flowers being sold Friday from 3.30 to 6 and Saturday 1 to 4. And they're also having a corn maze in the fall. And I can personally attest to the excellent quality of their green beans and potatoes. And we're done. <laughs> Thank you. It's called what town what? Townline Farms. Town line. Okay. Yeah. It's it's on. Baldwin. Yeah, I drove, I drove by it. I didn't realize it was open. I saw they were yeah, sitting. It's open three days a week now. Great. Thank you for Let's that. Start there. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yep. Sheila McCreven. Okay, um, so uh, Beecher Road Schools, um, the Woodbridge Board of Ed's Finance Committee met. Um, I believe that was 8-6, and I attended that um, by a Zoom. There were some, it was hybrid, so there were some people in person, some people by Zoom. Um, and Tom Handler from the Board of Finance also attended that. That was their first finance committee meeting of the year. They talked about um, ether funding and um, you know, what's what's involved with the new um, IT staff position, which is coming on staff from um, a position that used to be uh, external. Um, so they did a couple of transfers in order to make that possible. And then I also attended on um, August 4th, they have a reopening committee. Um, Sandy Stein used to be the representative from the Board of Selectmen. So uh, Dr. Bud asked me to attend that and they had a really robust discussion with a lot of stakeholders about how they're approaching the reopening, how they're going to keep kids safe uh, and re-engage them in school. One of the things probably of note for us as the Board of Selectmen, since the building is a, a town-owned building, is they're, they're um, having a complete look at their HVAC system there to make sure that they've got the proper amount of fresh air and ventilation, et cetera. So they are using the contract Van Zelm to uh, go in and do that. And Amity had used Van Zelm quite extensively too, very happy with their work. Um, and then the next meeting of the Woodbridge Board of Education is this coming Monday. And that relays on for Woodbridge Board of Ed and Coupop did not meet this month. So that's it from me. Thank you very much. Um, David Vogel. I hope you can hear me. I'm in a fringe area. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I the only uh, uh, report that I have is apparently the none of the commissions or that I am uh, liaison to have met. I know the library commission does not meet in August, and uh, I had reported at the last meeting on the previous meeting, and uh, the GATV has been engaged in judging a competition for. Uh, for documentary type videos. And uh, so they're very active, but no official agenda for a meeting as of uh, the la uh, uh, for this month. And uh, recreation, I just don't know. I'm new to this, but uh, I've been trying, I've been following the committees that I'm supposed to follow. And uh, I really haven't, uh, I haven't either received an official notice that they're having a meeting nor have I seen one online and I when I look at it. So I think I'm up to date on it as far as liaison work goes, but if I missed one, I apologize. Wonderful. Thanks for the efforts and trying to and, and trying to join your meeting from remotely. Very good job. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, that's everything for liaison reports. Um, it is not six o'clock yet, so I think we will skip public comments until six and we can start with item. Six, which is a youth youth bureau youth service bureau youth service enhancement grants. Dr. Lober alluded to these in his report from Human Services, and apparently they need permission to apply for these grants, as I understand it. So you have in your packet a copy of um, the request, which David said were two two youth service um, applications, one for fiscal year 2022 and 23 and the enhancement grant application for fiscal year 2022. 
Uh, they're due, all of them due by, as David said, 2021. So um, the amounts are 14,186 for the base grant and the enhancement grant is in the amount of $8,537. Jerry, can we do these together or we should, do we do them to part? You can do them together, that's fine. Okay. okay. So without objection, I'll, motion, I'll move forward that we approve the two-year <laughs> Service Bureau grant application for fiscal years 2022 and 2023, and the enhancement grant application for FY22. And the Youth Services Bureau base grant is in the amount of 14,186, and the enhancement grant is for the amount of $8,537. So I will move acceptance or or approval of the them applying for both those grants. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Joe. Questions or discussions on these grants? Hearing none, I will ask everyone to please raise their hand for approval. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm yeah, approved. Got you, David. Yep. Got you, David Vogel. Thank you. Aye. All right. It's your hand. Thank you, everyone. Okay, and now we go to, let's see, the number seven, we still got time, affordable housing grant round two, permission to apply, and I'm going to turn this over to Betsy to help us through it. She's been working on this with um, the uh, housing grant folks, and um, go ahead, Betsy, thank you. So uh, as uh, Beth mentioned, I've been in touch with the Housing Opportunity Study Committee, and they are seeking your permission to apply for the state's second round of affordable housing grants. Each town in the state is required to have an affordable housing plan by the end of next June. And these grants are designed to help uh, municipalities meet those requirements. Woodbridge will be part of a regional plan created by the South Central Regional Council of Governments. And in order to write that plan, there will be a regional study, I'm sorry, a regional survey but the housing committee um, would like more Woodbridge specific data and felt that a lot of the questions on the survey were not relevant to Woodbridge. So they plan to use this grant to do an additional survey and outreach to try to get more Woodbridge specific data and uh, more feedback from Woodbridge residents. And the information they gather will be used to uh, write the Woodbridge section of the regional plan. Okay, does anyone have any questions for Betsy? Go ahead, Sheila. Um, I'm just wondering, I, so I know that we're in, in some way participating with that SCROG grant, and I wasn't sure if this other grant, I saw that it, it um, wouldn't allow multiple applicants, and I don't know if SCROG has already applied for money through this program. I, I, maybe you don't know either, but that was- You're one. talking about the sustainable CT grant that you shared? Yeah, not so much sustainable CT as the um, this it, this same grant itself. If Sprog has also applied, then we're double. Oh, applying. I don't believe that they have. I will double check, but I don't believe that they have. Right, and so you mentioned the, the sustainable CT, and I know there's actually um, since the town applied and got bronze certification, they have new funding availability there. So I was just going to mention if if anyone can explore any options there in case. Funding's not available in this program. Maybe it's available there. Certainly, yeah. I haven't had a chance to do that yet, but it's on my it's on my uh, list. Great, thank you, Sheila. Last time I spoke with um, with Carl from Scrog, they had not applied, and I don't think they had any intention of applying. Okay, that that sounds good. And then, so what we would look to do is sort of marry up the survey results and and let Scrog know, or we would just do that completely on our own. So the survey, I believe, would be designed separately from the SCROG survey, but the data would be given to the, um, or, you know, an analysis of the data would be given to SCROG's consultant to be included in the plan. Okay, sounds great. Anyone else have any other questions for Betsy regarding this? Uh, yeah, Betsy, maybe you can clarify something for me. What, what data are you looking for? I mean, what are you what are you measuring? 
So I, I I don't work with the housing committee and um, our staff member who did does excuse me is on vacation right now so I don't know the specifics of what they're looking for but I do know that the housing uh, committee has had a chance to review the regional survey and they did not feel that it um, they didn't feel that it asked the um, questions that they thought were more appropriate to Woodbridge so Scrog covers Meriden New Haven. Guilford, um, Bethany. So it's a very wide range of towns. And they were looking for more Woodward specific There's data. Kids. In our scrog, in our cod is 15 towns. So you're right, including New Haven, which is quite different from Woodward. Right. So trying to write a plan, uh, obviously each town will have its own section, but trying to conduct a survey that's applicable to all 15 towns is obviously difficult. And that's that's where they're looking to find additional information, but I don't know specifically what kind of questions they're looking for. Okay. Anybody, okay. Anywhere I can get more information? So, so David, I, David, this is Jerry. I, I, I might add that um, what they had <clears throat> a consultant uh, meet with them the, the other night at their meeting. And I think they're talking about a survey to engage the general, to have people in town, townspeople, uh, indicate what their thoughts are on various questions relating to uh, uh, multifamily housing, affordable housing. So it's it's something that's done by all the towns, um, uh, not all the towns, but a lot of the towns have done it in their quest to produce an affordable housing plan that has to be filed with Hartford uh, by the end of June. So I think that's the primary reason that they are looking for a grant. Okay, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Two, two other thoughts with regard to um, surveys. I wonder if we could just forward to the Housing Committee the survey data that we got from um, uh, Rick Bordeaux's group over at Amity High School, because there were some housing questions and demographic questions there, if it's helpful. And then also, I think the town plan and zoning in the um, POCD process had done a survey of some sort. If that data is not too old, or at least could be compared back and forth, they did have a set of questions. It might be interesting. I think when Bordeaux created the survey that he did, he used the POCD survey questions, so he would have two points in time. It'd be interesting to have a third point maybe on the same questions. Do we have that? We have that some. I'm assuming we have that somewhere. What do you guys think? Should we send I'm it? not sure. I can check. Okay. Anyone have any objection to that? Okay. Sure, Sheila. We can look into that. Thanks. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. I was handed a resolution um, regarding this matter that I must read to make this legal. I guess. The Woodbridge Board of Selectmen hereby authorizes First Selectman Beth Heller to submit an application for planning grant to the Connecticut Department of Housing and administer the funding for undertaking a proactive planning process and lay out a strategy for meeting the housing needs of existing and future residents and workers. Would anyone like to make that motion? So moved. Thank you, Joe. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Paul. Um, anyone have any discussion or questions on that motion? Beth, just yeah. so I understand, so, so um, an application will be prepared and you'll you'll be the person submitting it. You're not personally uh, uh, creating the application, are you? Good heavens. <laughs> You're authorized to, to submit it, right? Is that correct, Jerry? <laughs> I think so, yeah. That's what okay. I got from this motion. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm submitting it um, and administering the funding. I'm not so sure about that. Jerry, are you there? Jerry, hi. just we had a quick question on this motion, Jerry. Yeah. I, 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 I was off the internet for a second, so that's why I didn't hear anything. Okay. So um, the, the Sheila had a question because the the motion that I read is authorizing the board of selectmen is authorizing me to submit an application for planning grant and administer the funding for undertaking a uh, undertaking a pro proactive planning process and lay out a strategy. I won't be doing that personally, correct? That's no. Right. You just 
to I think I'm going to guess it's your your designee. You, you can designate someone to administer it should yeah. we get the grant. Okay, got it. All right, great. Anyone have any comments or questions on the motion? So I think we have a first and I mean a, a motion and a second. All right, I'll call the question. If you are in favor, please raise your hand. Aye. 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 I got everybody. One, two, three, four, five. I'm missing Paul. Oh, you're I'm here. Oh. <laughs> Paul, you there? You're okay? I'm here. I'm here. Okay, and you say you vote yes? Yes. It's okay, great. <laughs> Sorry about that. My internet keeps cutting out. Yeah, a lot of people are having that tonight. Okay. There's, a, there's an excessive heat warning in Woodbridge. I just got a notification from the new state. So, okay, thank you. With that, that passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Um, it's 545. Let's keep going because um, we can't do public comment yet. We will go to item eight, which is Administrative Officer Director Finance Report. Tony. Thank you, Beth. The first item is tax refunds. Mm -hmm. So we have tax refunds in the amount of $16,617.50 as outlined in a memo from the tax collector. Correct. I will, I will uh, just to move things along, I'll make, there are no personal property refunds, two, two real estate refunds, and automotive, bunches of motor, motor vehicle refunds totaling, as you said, $16,617.50. I will move approval of that. Is there a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Um, any discussion or questions on this? Hearing none, all in favor, please raise your hand signifying aye. 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 Four, five, six. Looks good. Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you, guys. All right. Um, item B on the agenda is funding requests. And uh, the first one is line transfer number 21-22-01, sorry, in the amount of $19,450, um, moving from um, machine, maybe Tony, take it. <laughs> sure. So this is uh, the funding to, um, this is the uh, fund, uh, transfer to fund the replacement of the bottles that failed testing that Sean uh, indicated about earlier. Uh, sort of two parts to this. Uh, the one is to get funding to purchase the 14 replacement bottles. And the second is because these bottles are fit specifically for the uh, system that the fire department has, there's a bid waiver request to um, to use the existing vendor because you can't use different vendors' bottles with the uh, vendor that they use. And so um, this is the funding request for that. Thank it's you. It's actually a line item transfer. So I'll move acceptance of line item transfer number 2122-01, in the amount of $19,428 as described, described in the memo. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Joe. Any questions or further discussion on this first item? Uh, I just had one quick question. Sir David. What happens, what happens to the old bottles? Are they recycled? Are they, uh, are they scrapped or reused? They're not reused. I can tell you that much. Uh, that's a good question. I I know that occasionally have some around. I believe they um, scrap uh, scrap them, and and uh, but I'm not, I don't know 100. percent Okay. Any other questions or comments on this? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Two, three, four, six. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you, everyone. And let's see, there was another. There's, there's one more. I apologize for the lateness of this one, uh, but we had to. I wanted to gather all of the uh, invoices that we had for our legal fees. We've had a challenging year this year in the legal costs, and these are all of our expenditures through June 30th. Uh, for those of you who don't know, they sometimes legal bills take a while to prepare, so they come in a little late. Uh, than most bills, and so uh, and it's for last year. So I wanted to get it in this meeting because um, I want to close the books for the year. So these are just to clarify: these are all outside attorney fees, not our correct. These are out, that's correct. These are outside attorney the fees. Power, the turf field. We had, um, as like you said, a challenging year. The TP and Z. Um, 
The majority of the legal fees this year are for the open communities application and the consultant related. If I need to it, do you have a charging cord on you? Because that mine's in, in in Leonti's car. You're the, you're the best. We can hear you. Uh... We can hear you, David. Thank you. I'm glad to know that. <laughs> I, don't, I can't get you a charging cord from here in Connecticut. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Okay, no worries. Um, okay, so I will motion forward uh, approval of line item transfer number 2021-32 and the amount of $27,600. Hopefully some of this will begin to go away. This is for last year as well. Last year, correct. So, so I, just, I just might add that we fully anticipated or we thought there was a possibility that open communities would appeal the decision of the Planning and Zoning Commission. It didn't happen Here goes Jerry again. Anyway, they did not appeal. I, I think I can say that with pretty pretty good uh, pretty good knowledge. Right. Saved us a lot of money. We lost you, Jerry. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I back? Yep. And it said you said they did not appeal, correct? Right. And it saved the town a considerable amount of money. So that is that was the good news about this. Right. Okay. So I need a second on the motion. Second. Thank you, Paul. Um, any other discussion or comments for questions for me, Tony or Jerry? Anyone like that? And none all in favor, please signify by saying or raising your hand, please, to say aye. 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 Three, four. Joe Crisco? Aye. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we got everybody. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Beth, but yes. I, I did it. I just, it I wasn't relative necessarily to this motion, but I did have one further question for Jerry on this matter. Sure. Just because they did not appeal, does, does that, that does not mean that there might not be future legal action on this, does it? Or does it mean that it's closed? Well, the decision by the Planning and Zoning Commission is closed. They 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 um, acted on the application, and they made a decision. Right. There is always the possibility that a, a group could appeal to court under the fair housing standards. Uh, we don't think that's going to happen. We think that, uh, but but you're you're absolutely correct, correct, David. There could be further action by either open communities or another entity challenging. Our zoning laws. But right. We've gone a, a good part of the way by implementing what the PNZ just approved in terms of setting aside various uh, communities, uh, areas in town as possibly for, for affordable housing, so uh, or multifamily housing. So that's yeah, the, well, that was the good news. That is, it's all good news. But you know, you, you're never out of the woods until <laughs> until you're out of the woods. <laughs> you're, you're, you're absolutely correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good question. Thank you. All righty then. Um, next is the bid waiver request that Tony alluded to from the fire department replacing your tanks. They have a sole source vendor. They have a member of the chief. So um, I will make a motion that we approve the bid waiver requested by the chief to uh, to the sole source vendor of Scott Safety SCA Breathing Air Systems. They're the only ones apparently in the New York area that fit our bottles. So with that, um, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Joe. Any questions on this? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Two, three, four, five, six. Gotcha. Okay. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. And we will move on to number eight D, which is overview of proper use of American Rescue Plan Act, also known as ARPA funds. This is just a general beginning of the money. Correct. This is just a general overview. We will have uh, more information and more specific information as time uh, progresses. But I just want to give you a general overview. So the town is scheduled to receive. $2,589,568, so a little under $2.6 million. We've received half of it in June, and we are scheduled to receive the other half next June. So um, the general rule about the funding is you have to identify a need or negative impact of COVID-19, public health emergency, and then secondly, identify how your program service or expenditure will address that need or impact. 
So, um, like, unlike most grants where we have, we have a specific program or expenditure and we apply for a grant and we get it approved and then we perform the service and then we receive the money in the end, this is the process is reversed. We've received the money and have not yet identified what we would spend it on. So, um, that's sort of the guidance that's being put out. Uh, I could tell you that you cannot spend it on paying down pension or other other um, uh, obligations. You cannot use this matching funds towards other grants. You cannot add it to your fund balance. So those are the three specific things that you cannot do with it. But you can you can use it for supporting public health, addressing negative economic impacts or um, specifically investments in sewer and water infrastructure, broadband infrastructure, and there's a category called replace loss of revenue, which um, is, is a little complicated and um, you know, we would, we would there's specific requirements on what revenue is, is eligible and how you calculate that loss of revenue. That's I think more you more designed for like parking revenue or tourism revenue or items that were specifically impacted because you did not have the um, the, the activity. And then there's a there's another category. So um, there's a um, in terms of timeline. The fund the the costs cannot be before uh, March third of twenty twenty one. And you have to at least identify the cost or obligate the cost by December 31st, 2024. So we have a few years to decide how to expend the money. And then you have to actually expend all the funds by 20, December 2026. So if you have a capital project and you earmark the funds by 2024, you have two years to complete the project. So um, that's the overview. Uh, we're getting a lot of information on what other towns are doing, what other ideas are out there, and we intend to present more information in the future. I, I can add to uh, what Tony said that there is a lot of, I don't want to call it confusion, but at the last COG meeting, um, the Council of Governments meeting with 15 towns, and there's a lot of uh, concerns about what it can and can, cannot be spent on. People don't want to go ahead and spend it and then find out it was not an acceptable expense. So people are trying to make sure they're doing it for the right reasons and the correct expenditures. So this, there's a lot of discussion that has to be had before we go ahead. Most towns are used to, the governments are so, federal government and the state government are usually so restrictive right. about what you can spend it on, what you can't spend it on, how you spend it, where you spend it. And this has really very little guidance. So there's a lot of concern that you know, you spend it somewhere, and then five years down the road, you get. We had a meeting. Say, we can't do that. We had a meeting with uh, Lou Mangini from Rosa Deloro's office, with Jim Zioli from Orange, and Paula Cofrancisco from Bethany, and it was a little bit helpful. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody's sort of still wondering. We don't. We don't write. We don't want. To, <laughs> we don't want to make. You know, Jim, Jim's idea was let's uh, see what happens. You know. Yeah. I'd rather be a little bit more careful. So we're going to take our time and, um, you know, obviously keep the Board of Selectmen totally involved and uh, up to date, depending on um, what we think, you know, some ideas we'll ask. And I believe as part of this, do we have to ask the, we have to have a meeting with the residents or ask for residents? There's a public, there's a public uh, right. input portion to this, yes. Right. So we'll have to, you know, either do surveys or depending on what COVID's doing, it'll determine what we're doing with everything. But there's all sorts of um, things that we have to make sure we uh, benches we make benchmarks we we meet. So, we, but we will keep you informed. So, that's just the beginning of this whole thing. Does anybody have any questions on this for Tony? Yeah, Tony. I, what I didn't hear is anything about the education or, uh, or the schools. That's a great question. That, uh, they receive yeah. their own pot of money. So this okay. is this is specifically for town purposes. Right. Okay. And not for any businesses that lost income, just for the town. Correct. It's for town, town, town. The board of ed received their own funds, and they have their own procedure and their own 
of programs that they're going to spend it on. This is specifically for town purpose. From what I understand, there are lots and lots of different um, funding sources that are coming out. For example, business funds to how to recover and this a myriad of them. Lou was going over a few of them when we met with him, but specifically this is for our town, this ARPA fund. So. And one last question. What was that figure again? Are you... uh, yeah, I'll tell you what. 2.6 million? It, yeah, it's 2.6, but it's a little less. It's uh, okay. 2,589,567 and 62 cents. And we've received half of it <laughs> so far. We got to account for the 62 cents. For I'm a little hesitant to spend the other half until we actually receive it because you never know. One day someone will say, sorry, you're not getting the other half. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So, I asked how they arrived at that number, but I'm afraid to get a, get the answer. So, <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, David. Sheila, I know you had a question. Yeah. Um, so I think I understand that um, both uh, the Woodbridge Board of Education and the Amity District both received some ESSER funding. I know the Woodbridge Board of Ed talked about having a. a Open forum so community members could weigh in on options there. And I and, I, and Tony, is it correct that uh, Amity has a portion as well? I would assume so. Yes, I yeah. believe they have. Yeah. Yeah. So of ours, I, I noticed you mentioned the broadband infrastructure. Right. I wondered. It certainly, with all this use of remote meetings and all the wonderful work that Pua and her team are doing there in the background. Um, I wondered if, if maybe there's a project that could help wire up other so buildings. So it says here that the projects eligible uh, must be designated to provide service to unserved and underserved households and businesses. So we have to. Mean? Uh, okay, so right. that's more to do with getting people uh, connected to. Up to a certain level, correct. Okay. But there, we could certainly look and see. Maybe perhaps um, the access has to be. 25 th or th and three um, and megabytes per second. That's the sort of the thing. Yeah, so I, guess I, could, you know. I also wondered about, I know that there are some systems that let you also see the agenda at the same time and then the public could follow along and that sort of thing. And if we're going to be doing all these remote meetings, certainly due to COVID and whatever else might come our way public health wise, it might be a, something to look into. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Good suggestion. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. It is now 6.02. And um, first, I have to ask the clerk if there has been any submitted in writing uh, comments as of 3 o'clock today. No, I have not received. No, and I have not received any by email. Thank you. Is or there by snail mail. Okay, <laughs> snail mail. I love it. Um, it does appear that I have uh, at least one person on that would be I interested thought. in making public comment. Bring them in. Two minutes. Good. Sounds good to me. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Chuck, I've un unmuted you. Do you wish to make public comment? Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, good evening, folks. Uh, very briefly, I'm asking the Board of Selectmen to convene a Charter Revision Commission uh, specifically to look at changing how we approve a town budget. I don't think anybody would dispute the fact that our last two attempts were uh, not well handled, not well received, and frankly, an embarrassment to the town. The virtual was so bad, we had to adjourn it without a resolution, and there was a fair amount of chaos in the one that we did have in person. Now, I am not suggesting that we need to discount the work that the Board of Finance does, but the ultimate deciders of how we spend our money are the voters of this town. And the process we have now is antiquated. It's incredibly limiting. It forces people to appear in one place in a one or two hour window in the middle of a work week. And we are certainly able to do other referendums for budget. Amity for one, and I understand we're likely to go down the path of having uh, the same thing for bonds that are gonna be considered. So I, I think it's important uh, that, that we look at this, um, this last year as, as an experiment that failed. And there is a chance to dramatically improve how we, as a town, approve our town budget. And I believe the process is to go through a charter revision commission and then to put this before the voters in some method. I think it's controlled by the state, not 100% sure. 
So um, I, that's my, my ask of this group. And uh, I hope you take it seriously and make it happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else, Jeff, there, Jerry? No, none, no members of the public. Okay, thank you so much. All righty. Uh, oh, wait, well, wait just a moment. Let me oh, just check okay. something. Okay. Beth, a quick question. Sure. It's, it's Dave, mm -hmm. Dave Vogel. Uh, mm -hmm. When we have public comments, and I know that our virtual meetings have really inhibited that process, uh, and not not to our, uh, not in a good way. It's just been very inhibiting. Don't we normally ask first the name and address of the person who is who is speaking so that everybody knows? Yes, I, I, David. We, I normally do. It's just I know Chuck. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the, the rules for remote meetings require everybody to identify themselves before yeah. they speak. And I forgot that. I'm sorry. Right, so just okay. Then, then consider me a reminder. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I know Chuck Pine on Center Row, but I don't know the number. I'm sorry. I do. One sixty-two Center. Okay. Oh. I was say he seems to still be in the attendee list. If you need, yes, to he is. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, anyone else out there? I don't see anyone. Okay. Thank you. If someone dings in. We'll we'll uh, deal with it. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to item nine, um, I, if you recall, brought up the fact that I'm concerned about having a referendum at the moment for various reasons. Number one, being COVID, and there is some issues with having it. And number two, if we get back up, we're going to we're going to have some problems with funding again. And I'm a little bit leery about spending money at this point. Um, so I will turn it over to the board for a discussion about how you feel about that. We could postpone it. We don't, we're not going to put it away, but we could postpone it perhaps until a time when um, it's more appropriate to have people voting on this. this. So I guess I'll call on uh, Joe Crisco first. Do you have any comments? No. Okay. Uh, Paul, do you have any comments on this? Uh, no. Okay. David Lober. Yeah, I, I think it's a very realistic and... Um, Smart idea to do that. Okay, thank you. Yay, uh, Sheila McCrevin. I'm going alphabetically in case you didn't guess. We figured. <laughs> um, I, 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 it is it is quite unfortunate that COVID is uh, coming back into the fore, and I and I share your concerns, Beth. I think that's really well placed. Um, and then I wonder, um, maybe there's an opportunity with some of this federal and state money that that maybe we could try to move some of these things forward in the meantime. So even though it's unfortunate that we have this opportunity, maybe we could take this opportunity to to look at possible other funding, maybe that ESSER money from Beecher, et cetera. Yeah. Because the roofs probably need to be done and, and Tony and I are speaking about for finding some other funding sources as well. So yeah, I do know that the um, just from having served on that building committee, that the quality of the air is is really uh, if there's water incursion of any sort. So it could be an air quality issue that they're going to want to address, maybe appropriately connected to COVID. So, okay, that sounds good. Thank you. And uh, David Vogel, any comments? Well, I just offered last time that I thought that uh, a leaking roof was more of an emergency that might be able to be covered in our fund balance that everybody was a little bit against, but uh, perhaps since it does seem like an emergency that we can't address right now, we should look at that again, revisit it. Thank you. And uh, I do agree that uh, we should not try to run a referendum that nobody can go to. So uh, <laughs> let, let's, let's, let's see what we can do about where this goes. Okay, so we'll keep you posted. I'm hoping things turn around. I, I, anyway, let's just hope it gets better out there. So with that, um, I guess what we do, we have to make a motion to table this, Jerry, or how does this go? Or just do nothing? You can, you can just let it go off. Okay, so if, with by consensus, we all agree to remove this yep. item nine from the agenda. Thank you so much. Um, item 10, we had them scheduled for 7 o'clock. Um, this is a presentation from Arbor Haven regarding the former Country Club of Woodbridge. Um, I had a brief run-through with them yesterday, and 
their PowerPoint was not complete. So hopefully it'll be done and we'll get it out to you after tonight. We haven't seen it completely yet, just a couple. So they're very, they're, uh, I guess they, I will allow them to introduce it themselves. Are they here yet? Uh, Beth, the presenter is here. The other gentlemen are not. Okay. Can we they all should. They all should be there by 6.15. I told them 6.15. Okay, cool. All right, so we can just keep going if that's all right with everyone. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay, item 11 on the agenda is Assistant Administrative Officers Report. I'll turn it over to Betsy Yagla, please. Thank you. Thank you. you. Um, so in your packet, you should have um, three requests. The first one on the agenda is from um, Nancy Fund at New Services. Uh, she's requesting permission to use the green on um, the 25th of this month to hold the Youth Services Annual Outdoor 7th Grade Picnic. And this event is designed to help incoming Amity Middle School Bethany students to meet each other and also meet the school principal and assistant principal. There will be games, pizza, and a DJ. And seeking uh, permission from you all to hold that event. I have one question, Betsy, about, um, I know in here it says a police officer is being requested. Is that on the town or is that being paid for by? Um, Nancy would be talking to the police about that. Uh, and and you services will pay for the police or the town. I will I will follow up with her about that. Just ever wary of the you know, extra monies. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, anyone have any other questions? Well, let's get a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve this request for youth services picnic um, with hopefully COVID, whatever's whatever is required as of September twenty. I'm sorry, August twenty fifth should be in place um, as described. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, David. Um, any questions other on this other than? Yeah, uh, Beth, is that with any caveat about the expense involved? Yes, the good idea. We should make sure that the police. I'll, thank you for the friendly amendment to my motion. Okay. <laughs> that the police officers will. It's a. I'm assuming one officer will be covered by Hughes Services. Correct. It's the town money. It's all the same money, but it should come out of their budget. Right. Correct, Tony. Good idea. Yes, that's correct. We'll make sure that the youth services pays for it. Keeping things clean. It's still all town money. It's all one pot, but just keep it. I clean. understand, but it's yep. you know it it's an allocated. It, I you know. Yep, you're absolutely correct. Their budget also, is allocated. It's been it's been voted through, and it. Also, for typically Tony. for uh, typically for youth evening program expenditures, there's a portion charged to Bethany because of. There's Bethany students, so okay, it'll have some impact there as well. Good. Okay, thank you for that friendly amendment, David. Um, who seconded this, Joe or David? I can't remember. It's mine. Okay, with the with the amendment. Okay, any other comments or questions? Hearing none, please signify by saying aye if you approve. Aye. Step one, two, three. Four. Aye. Aye. Okay, and I've got Paul and David said I good David Vogel. Okay, thank you so much. That's unanimous. Okay, Betsy, next one. All right. The next request is an application from Boy Scout Troop 63. This is to hold their holiday tree sale. Uh, this is an annual event. And as always, they are requesting to use the Grove for this fundraiser. The sale will take place from November 12 through December 26. As, as always. Yes, there's no difference this year from what they've done in the past. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve that as described um, in their uh, very nice form that was filled out. Thank you, it makes a big difference. Um, is there a second? Second. Okay, anybody have any questions on this one? Will, will, they, be, will they be bringing a trailer? Let me see if it says in their application. It's not in the application. It's not on the application. I'm not sure. Usually they do, and they've they got do. um a hot chocolate set up in there for the volunteers working the event. I can check with them on that. Yep. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve this. Is there a second? Second. And I will add that um just with information provided provided regarding the trailer, yes or no, we'll get back on that. I think it's okay. 
All right, thank you. Um, any other comments? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye with a raised hand or speak. Aye. 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 Four, five, David, four, aye. Two. Thanks, David. Okay. Thank you. And the last request comes from the Recreation Department. They are seeking approval to hang um, a large sign on the center field fence. This is the sign that they use every year to advertise the road race, which will be held on October 2nd this year. The sign's three feet tall by 17 feet wide, and it reads 39th Annual Woodbridge Road Race and Fun Run, October 2, 2021. Again, this is something that's done annually. They go they go across the fence so it doesn't impact sight lines at all. Correct. correct. Because it's sort of in the back there. Okay. Anyone like to make a motion to approve this? So move. Thank you, Joe. David. I second. Thank you, David Vogel. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions on this? How long do will it be up, by the way? Do we know? Um, they usually put it up a few weeks before the event. Oh, yeah. I see this. September 11th through October 9th. Sorry, it's in the memo. Just saw that. Okay. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Two, aye. Five, six. Great. Got David Vogel, too. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And we are moving along to 6.15. Oh, Betsy, do you have another? I'm sorry. I do. I just want to give everyone a quick um, update on some events, some other events we have coming up. Um, this Saturday is uh, another second Saturday event. This is an art event, and there will be artists from the new Woodbridge Arts Guild, water painting supplies, I'm sorry, watercolor painting supplies for attendees to use, a community art project, an open mic, and a craft supply swap. Um, rain will cancel the event, and unfortunately, the forecast calls for thunderstorms. I'm keeping an eye on it, and um, if need be, I will cancel the event on Friday, um, but keeping my fingers crossed. Um, that is from 10 to 12 on the library lawn. Um, the last second Saturday event is September 11th um, from 10 to 1. It's a craft fair and maker's market. And it'll be in the library and center building parking lot, very similar to the tag sale that we held in June. The parking lot will be closed off to traffic. Um, there are still spots available for vendors. So if you know anybody who uh, crafts and sells, please encourage them to sign up for this. The link to sign up is on the town website or people can contact me if they have questions. Uh, the Diversity and Inclusion Committee is planning to hold an event immediately following the Woodbridge Road Race on October 2nd. This is a partnership with the library, which is resuming their One Town, One Book uh, events. And the book they've chosen is called American Like Me. It's a series of essays uh, by first and gener I'm sorry, first and second generation immigrants about what it's like to be an American. And the book is edited by the actress America Ferreira, hence the name American Like Me. The event that the committee is putting together is called Woodbridge Like Me. And the idea is to celebrate Woodbridge and um, all things Woodbridge. So any local group interested in participating can contact me or any member of the committee. Committee members will be reaching out to community groups if they have not already. And um, once this shapes up a little more, I'll have more information for you at your September meeting. And lastly, I'm excited to announce that we now have all these signs delivered to the town to create the town's first bike route. So once Public Works staff has the availability to do so, those signs will be posted and I will take pictures and let you all know. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, do you know anything about what this outdoor circus show is that uh, Selectman Frisco mentioned in his... Uh... Yes, there oh. is a um, company on um, Lunar Drive, somewhere in the business district. I, I'm not sure off the top of my head. It's, it's a dead end. And during the pandemic, um, they've been doing shows out in the um, the dead end of their street and they've sought permission from their neighbors and from the property owner and the police department to do so and they teach um aerial arts so it's acrobats but um not gymnastics in the traditional sense so they use um not going to have the correct lingo, but they use things that hang from the roof and they have a setup that they can do outside safely and they sell tickets and it's one way that they're keeping their business going during the pandemic. It's very clever. Wow, yeah. Thank you. Okay, just kind of wondered. Good to know. Okay, um, thank you very much, Betsy. Anyone have any questions, further questions for Betsy? 
Hearing none, how are we doing with our participants for item uh, 10, which is the presentation from Arbor Haven? All participants are present. I'm going to make them all panelists at this point, and um, I will pass my baton on to the gentleman who told me he would be the presenter. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Uh, uh, I'm just going to wait for uh, my fellow uh, team members to no worries. video and audio. Harv and Joe, if you click on the mute and, and turn on video button at the bottom, uh, you should have access. All right. I'm soon. Harv? Or, uh, the bottom at the bottom of your uh, of the black screen, it should say uh, unmute and and turn on video. We're very patient here. We have this happen all the time. Thank you. I need to tell you, fortunately. <clears throat> Alexander, can you uh, give me a <laughs> a clue here? Sure. Uh, to the right of the mute button, it should say turn on video. Uh, also, or the left of the share button. To the left of the share. Okay. Bottom of the screen should be turned on. There we go. Is Joe, that it? Able? Yep, there we go. Uh, Joe, Joe are, you, are you able to turn on video or are you going to just be doing audio tonight? Uh, I'm audio only, unfortunately. Uh, okay. Well, um, you know, we'll miss you. Uh, hope, luckily, we can still hear you. Um, everyone, uh, I'd like to uh, show you our presentation uh, for our, our plan for the uh, redevelopment of uh, the country called Woodbridge. I'm going to turn on the deck and initially turn it over to Joe. Probably introductions of you folks as well would be helpful. I didn't, I didn't do that. So. Okay. Uh, okay. Great. Well, we can do that first then. Um, just give me one second and let me change the order. It won't take long. Sorry about that. No problem. All right. Well, um, so. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm now sharing my screen so everyone should be able to see. Uh, so uh, my name is Alexander Corral Shapiro. Um, my background is uh, in institutional finance. Uh, previously, I worked in affordable housing. Um, before that, I was a project manager for a general contractor. Uh, my father, Harv Shapiro, was also part of the team. Uh, Harv, would you mind uh, please introducing yourself? Sure. Um, I'm a uh, member of Arbor Haven Development. Um, I'm a um, second generation Connecticut residential developer. I've done uh, approximately 2,000 dwelling units uh, in the greater New York area. I'm sorry? No, that, that's it. Um, the, uh, the market value, uh, the then current market value of the work that I did is approximately $250 million. And Joe, you want to do a brief intro before I introduce the rest of the team? Sure. Um, I'm an attorney, um, former investment banker, currently real estate developer. Um, I've been in this end of the business since about 2008, so meltdown. Um, I currently have a number of projects going. Uh, this one, obviously, in cooperation with uh, Arbor Haven. Um, I have a larger development going in California. Uh, which is a, a, a multifaceted development. We've got uh, single family homes, maybe 225 there. We've got about 140 multifamily units. We have about 2 million square feet of industrial space and then 30 acres of retail development. Um, so that, that's, yeah, that kind of tells you we can do a lot of everything. So that's, that's me. All right, so the second component, oh, sorry, so the second part of our team is uh, what we tried to do is we tried to find some uh, best in class local companies to make sure that uh, the project is completed both uh, to very high standards uh, as well as on time and on budget. Of course, those are extremely important to us and the town. 
Uh, the first component of this approach is our general contractor, By Carrier. Uh, By Carrier is an experienced local um, local uh, construction company. Uh, they're about 50 uh, years old or so, um, and they have done an incredible amount of work in the area. Uh, we've included a link to uh, to some of the awards they've won, and we can just jump to the next slide. Here are some of the projects which they recently completed or in process. Uh, they are local, so if anyone wants to go drive by and see them, see the quality, uh, see what sort of construction type is being done, uh, ask some people what, how, how happy they are, please go ahead and do so. Uh, their, their reputation is excellent. Um, the next part of, our, of, of this multifaceted approach is uh, getting a local architect. Architect. Now, this, uh, this architect is a very, very young company, and so their technical abilities are really essential to how we're going to be planning the project. Specifically, um, they switched to 3D, 3D building information modeling tech, which means they can do all of their uh, plans in 3D, at least the cost savings, it leads to improved quality, it leads to really knowing down to the very last detail what's going to be on the site. And especially with uh, such a complex topographical project as such as this, that's going to be essential. It also uh, is very, very good when trying to deal with environmental concerns, and with dealing with green tech, you can model out exactly how the, how the light hits, how, what, what goes on from there, and how, you know, if you have a, a heat pump instead of uh, gas heating, various, various ways of just really getting it just right. Finally, finally, we're working with Colliers International as our construction manager. Uh, they have an extensive back office, uh, around 15,000 15, or so uh, professionals across a bunch of countries. Uh, sorry, listed there, 68 countries. Um, and they're going to, their extensive back office is going to be essential in mo managing a project of this size. We believe that uh, coordination is really, is really quite key to get to any project. And uh, with this approach, we, uh, we expect to have all of our bases covered uh, well, as best as anyone can. Um, here are some uh, projects that Arbor Haven has previously done, uh, showing a couple single family homes, multifamily, uh, something a little more dense than I think uh, Woodbridge is, is looking forward to doing. Uh, we'd like to introduce some of the renderings of, uh, this, is, this is just representative style. It's not by any means what we've chosen yet, but we're trying to show you what we're going to be doing. And key is uh, vary, variation. So there are going to be different types of units. And, you know, Woodbridge, as you drive through it, is consistently a different, uh, different uh, community. Not all the homes look the same. We want to make sure that our homes have that same uh, quality to them. Uh, in addition to, uh, if you notice at the bottom, bottom right, um, there'll be some uh, multifamily units, uh, which are uh, semi-attached homes. That's one version of it. We're also looking at uh, ranch ranch homes and a few others. Uh, from there, uh, Joe, you want to take it away? Okay. Uh, what Alex has put up on the screen is an aerial view of the golf course, as it were. Um, and what we've done in our approach to this project is take into consideration a number of uh, constituencies in Woodbridge, um, people who are concerned about open space, people who are concerned about maintaining the character and quality of the town, um, folks uh, who folk are concerned about the costs associated with this property and the drain or contribution to the tax base. Um, we took into account open space considerations, um, took into account uh, impact on the school system. So we tried to uh, address as many of the constituencies as we could. Um, the approach led to a fairly customized uh, development. This is not um, something that you would see a lot of other places. You know, if you had Toll Brothers come in, they'd run a road in, bulldoze all the trees, uh, slap down a roadway, and put up 150 of the same type of house. Um, that's uh, not, not what we are about here. Um, this rendering that Alex put up there shows um, the bike paths that we would start with. Um, it's funny, we would propose a housing development and start with the bike paths, but 
Our approach is to take into consideration the quality of the life of the people who are living in these homes. Um, we've broken down the property into um, three different types of uh, uh, circumstances. We've got uh, large single family homes. We have age restricted homes. Uh, we have uh, some market rate and affordable homes. Um, Alex is reading my mind and brought up the color coded rendering of the uh, breakdown of the housing types uh, that would go on this property. Uh, we can scroll backwards, Alex. One quick interjection. Um, the uh, bike paths here are also going to be walking paths uh, with the intention of allowing people to continue to walk their dogs and explore the property. Um, definitely, yes, for bikes, but it's also uh, the intention is to make uh, the open space feeling of, of the golf course remain for the people of Woodbridge so they still have access to the site. Get to yep. enjoy it. Picking up on the open space theme, go back if you would, Alex, to where you were. Thank you. Uh, picking up on the open space theme, um, Alex and I spent hours, literally hours, walking this property. Um, it's a beautiful piece of property. Um, the thing that impressed us is the maturity of the trees that are on the property. And we kind of came to the conclusion that that's something that you want to respect when you're looking at developing this. So we came up with a plan which, in our minds, saves virtually every single tree possible on this property. So looking at your um, the screens there, you'll see that um, there's still gonna be a lot of open space. Anything that's largely covered with trees now would remain covered with trees. Uh, the idea is build the houses in the fairways, put the roads in the fairways, leave the trees alone. If you go back, Alex, to where we were, we can keep going. Thank you. Um, the large um, homes naturally seem to fit based on the lot sizes um, in between two fairways uh, with a single strand of trees between them. Uh, the other areas um, a little bit more dense, but you still have a lot of trees that you're working around. Uh, the bike paths, as you'll notice, um, go around the entire perimeter of the property. Uh, they are also weaving through the interior of the property, largely along the tree lines where there's uh, double stands of trees. Uh, the intention is to keep as much open space as possible. Uh, we're anticipating that we'll donate back to the town about 50 acres of open space when we're finished with the project. Um, and there will be, as you can see from all of these uh, bike and walking paths in here, uh, probably another 12 to 15 acres of uh, dedicated open space uh, weaving through the property. I mean, it's not going to be big blocks because it's uh, bike paths and walking paths, but it still is open space. So there's going to be a lot of open space. We plan on maintaining the tennis courts and volleyball courts, which are down on Woodfield Road. Uh, those will all get rehabbed. Um, the clubhouse, I think, is destined for the bulldozer. Uh, there will be a pool, which will be found pool, which will be put in. Um, I do not think the one that is there can be resurrected. So uh, there will be some new version coming in there. Um, and all, and you can see the sort of pinkish piece all the way up at the top uh, left-hand corner at Ansonia and Johnson. Um, we figured that's not probably the most ideal spot for um, housing. So we put a, a, a playground, a park, um, you know, a public amenity, if you will. Um, and you know, if, if, if it can be done in some way, shape or form, the old farmhouse there, which, is, which became the snack bar, uh, maybe that can be incorporated in some way, shape or form into the park. Um, Maybe we can roll forward one, Alex, if we could. Um, I'm sorry, was there a question? From are there? All right, this, no, one, go back to the, yeah, I'm right. Uh, this is a little different than the um, 
astral view, I guess you would say. Uh, this shows um, where the roads are uh, going into the property. Um, we've sort of taken out the bike paths and put in the roads in this version. So you can see how things come together. Uh, on the perimeter of the property, uh, this purple area, um, this is all going to be the uh, larger homes uh, that would be part of the development. These are, would qualify for what the town considers residential A zoning, which is a 65,000 square foot or greater lot, uh, roughly acre and a half. Um, the concept here is too deep, meaning two lots deep on each side. So uh, along in Sony, you'd have uh, uh, a front lot and a back lot, and on Johnson, you'd have a front lot and a back lot. Um, we double up the driveways between the lots. So actually, we're using one driveway, 20 foot, five, 20 foot, 25 foot wide driveway for um, four, four houses. It'll come in, the first two houses will be serviced by the driveway, and the back two houses will also be serviced by that driveway. This reduces the number of curb cuts along Johnson and Anthonia. Uh, we figure you're going to have probably, um, depending upon the configuration, somewhere between four uh, to five on uh, Ansonia and somewhere around four or so on Johnson. Uh, near fair, I'm sorry, was there a question? No. Okay, somewhere on over there to the left where Fairview touches the property, that would be one entrance to uh, the property. Uh, that's kind of over near where the old snack bar is. And that would lead into the property. There's a bit of a, a uh, traffic circle there. And running off of that, and you know, if you go back and look at the previous slide, you can see those roads run right down the fairways. Um, and the houses would be on either side of the uh, roadways. Uh, you go down along Woodfield there. Um, okay, go, Mark, thanks. We go back along Woodfield there. Um, there's an entrance. If you go back to the uh, breakdown, Alex, of the uh, different houses, thank you. Along Woodfield there, going into the sort of yellow part, uh, that is your um, age-restricted homes. Uh, that We figured that there's a natural um, access point there near the uh, cell phone tower, and there's actually an existing road there. And we would uh, dress that up and use that as uh, one separate entrance for uh, the restricted homes. You'll notice that in the interior of the property, you can move around between the different areas. But um, you know, some people like to have their uh, own entrance. Uh, further down Woodfield, there would be another entrance. Right now, with the clubhouse is there, would be just about where that is, and that would enter into the uh, lower green part of the uh, property, where there would be uh, a couple of rows of houses along those two streets. There, um, the green part would be the. Uh, market rate and affordable houses, those would qualify, those houses and the age-restricted homes would all qualify for uh, what the town labels uh, residential B zoning, which is the 15,000 uh, square foot minimum lot. Uh, and you know, a lot of the, the uh, homes will back up to uh, bike paths and stuff like that. So there will be some um, easement restrictions on uh, maybe the last 12 or 15 feet of the lot because the bike path is right next to it and they can't obstruct it and that type of thing. Uh, so this is actually the breakdown. Um, you know, because we're running the roads down the middle of the fairways and putting the houses along the fairways, uh, we're able to keep as many trees as we can. Um, and there, there are some beauties in there. Uh, we're gonna keep all the open space that's up along where and Sonia and Woodfield joined and then comes down along Woodfield, all that will stay open. All the property over on the side near the Wilbur Cross, that stays open. Uh, the pond obviously is gonna stay open space. Um, there will be some additional open space in the property, um, in the, the different areas, largely the 
the market rate and affordable homes and the age restricted homes, some uh, smaller park areas. Uh, we didn't uh, put those in because we haven't really figured out where they go yet. Once we start laying out lots per se, then uh, we can get into that level of detail. So that's largely the breakdown of the project. Um, there's, there's a lot of different moving parts to it, um, but it kind of uh, keeps things in context for the town since you have uh, all the large lots along uh, Ansonia and Johnson. Um, after the development is done, if you drove along Ansonia or Johnson, you actually wouldn't see much of this development because all the trees would still be standing. Um, and you'd have the bike path running along there too. Um, the, the denser stuff, the stuff that we label residential B zoning would all be on the interior of the parcel. Uh, and really you would only see that if you went into uh, the property to go to your home. So that is the story in our nutshell. So I'll turn it back to Alex. One more thing to add, uh, we are absolutely gonna be keeping uh, as open space, the uh, old sledding hill. Um, we've heard that uh, that uh, local children and uh, some people still like to do, uh, go sledding uh, in the center of the property. Uh, we will maintain access to that because you know if there's a great sledding hill, they can't take it away from the kids. So that needs to stick around. Um, moving from there, um, we wanted to show um, some discussion of the taxation. Um, contribution. Um, now, these are just very early numbers. Um, we we could, can't, can't be sure about anything yet, but approximately uh, 2.6 million per year annually. Um, per, excuse me, 2.6 million annually uh, will be the contribution for, to the town's budget. And uh, additionally to that, we believe that there will be, uh, we're thinking of a purchase, purchase price is, is going to be approximately $9 million. You know, due to the environmental and all sorts of things that we need to have some further discussions about that. But that's the ballpark. That's approximately where we are. This is just a quick overview of what Joe has just gone through. Uh, as we discuss it, though, we, you know, one of the things which we've done our best to do is to create uh, somewhat smaller blocks. We believe that that creates a neighborhood style community, uh, allows kids to quickly uh, uh, run over and play with one another. Uh, long blocks tend to tend to feel somewhat uh, separating and uh, dehumanizing, so we'd rather uh, avoid that. And um, from there, we have just a much more detailed narrative. This is essentially what Joe has just gone through. Um, you are, everyone will be welcome to read, read this, but this is basically just re repetitive of what Joe has just gone through. Uh, and as far as the timeline, uh, we expect uh, once we get site plan approval, we'll break ground pretty much right then. Um, and we're expecting uh, the total project completion time will be around 24 to 36 months. Uh, of course, you know, that will depend on all sorts of conditions, but we're hopeful that that is a conservative schedule. Uh, again, here is uh, a site plan, and this time we actually uh, broke down all of the open space. As you can see, uh, all of this green area will be uh, unbuilt. Uh, note, note that that includes um, both the pond in the southwest corner, but also uh, the uh, somewhat smaller drainage pond on the, on the northeast. Um, we noticed uh, a bunch of frogs who seem to enjoy hanging out there, and the, uh, the stonework is excellent. So we wanted to hold on to that. Uh, additionally, as myself being a mountain biker, uh, I noticed that the, um, the somewhat mountainous area or hilly area on the, on the south, on the northeast uh, corner would be an excellent place for someone to get a workout doing a bike ride. So we thought a bike path through there would be excellent. Uh, again, uh, this is just, these are all approximate numbers. Of course, once we actually start doing all the layout work and really getting to details, we'll figure out exactly how many acres of uh, parkland slash open space. But we think 50 acres approximately is pretty much where we're gonna be. Uh, one additional thought was uh, in terms of uh, school buses and such, uh, having a, a school bus um, on the upper left-hand corner of the site on the, on the northeast northwest corner uh, would make life easier for both the school buses and for the kids. Maybe they can ride their bikes from within the property to uh, the, the northwest, uh, or then or have or pick up, get picked up by the by the uh, the new clubhouse. Uh, one of the other questions which uh, came to mind is uh, how affordable will the affordable units that we build be? And 
it's key that you know the affordable units are not just called affordable, but actually are. And so we are expecting sales pricing to be, uh, on average, you know, the, the actual mix will there'll be some further discussion. But on average, it's going to be around two hundred fifteen thousand dollars per home. Um, now these numbers are based on current HUD limits. Uh, there are these are you know statutory numbers, and we they will be adjusted. But um, this is the ballpark of where things are going to end up. Uh, any questions before we move on? Oh, I, actually, I see my next slide is question. So uh, as we've gone, yeah, um, these are all going to be sold. None of these are going to be rental. Is that correct? Uh, we are we are planning on uh, on se on selling the units uh, the affordable the affordable units. Um, we believe uh, it would be too much red tape to do them as rentals. Uh, so we're hoping to actually sell them. Uh, we think that the uh, waiting list for uh, uh, affordable units will be extensive. Um, that's one of the major issues actually across the country when it comes to. Uh, so my previous one of my previous experiences was at Enterprise Community Partners. And that is an affordable housing um, syndicator. And one of the things which you have a great deal of trouble doing is uh, figuring out how you can get um, actual uh, home homeowners into the affordable housing units. So that is uh, uh, something that really helps both the uh, communities that in which people are living and also the people themselves. So we think that is uh, definitely the way to go for these units. They should absolutely should be sold. Um, we have no yet no plans to uh, rent them out. Okay. Uh, any, any other selectmen have any questions at the moment? I'll just call. Maybe you could, uh, I don't know, you want to stop. I could start calling on folks if you'd like. Joe Crisco? No. No questions. Okay. Um, all right. We'll go to, got to find my list again. So you guys. Uh, Paul Kirikos, do you have any questions at the moment or comments? Uh, um. <clears throat> So, uh, Alex, you were um, you're hoping for a timeline of 24 to 36 months. Yes. Um, is that comparable to the other projects that you folks have delivered? Uh, well, we think that um, that timeline is really going to depend um, on the market and mm -hmm. uh, how how quickly we can sell sell units. We're, we were we were estimating that the um, let me pull back to the correct slide here. We're expecting that in the purple section, we're going to sell uh, maximum eight units a year. So that, of course, is going to slow down your schedule. And we're not sure how that'll work out. Um, but as far as um, construction timing of getting our part done, uh, especially with building out the amenities, that schedule is very is very easily within within range. Uh, the issue really is um, how quickly do people buy things? I mean, we 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 can build it. That's that's not the problem. The issue is uh, finding finding uh, finding the buyers and getting them uh, getting them into the homes. You know, of course, you don't want to build you know all the units and just sit there. Uh, you know, no no one wants to drive around a ghost town. No. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Paul. Uh, David Lober. Yeah. Hi. Uh, you have 145 homes total. How many of these will be age restricted? Uh, we are thinking right now. Uh, and that's with our just making an adjustment, you know, just a, literally half hour ago, uh, about 37 of them. Uh, and that, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, that these numbers uh, are still are there's still some movement here, um, but we think that that's probably what is the right way to go. We were we were looking at, at a larger unit count. and We didn't want to overwhelm people. So, you know, thought this is this it reduced it this way. Um, and. We're hopeful that uh, with that breakdown, it will um, a fit onto the site nicely and also not not overwhelm anyone. Mm -hmm. um, I, I assume you've done the market research. These numbers look very high to me in terms of sale price. Well, for the high end, there is there is definitely some uh, some some worry about that. Those those numbers uh, those numbers uh, imply that we are going to build some really nice large homes that some people are going to be really eager to get into. Um, but as far as the age restricted, those numbers are right in line with uh, Harf, what, what was the name of the village that was in orange? Um, Fieldstone. Yes, Fieldstone. Those, those numbers are right in line with Fieldstone. Um, and uh, 
based on the sales uh, pace in, in Woodbridge, that's where we think things land. But again, this is this is initial. Um, of course, you know, if it moves one way or the other, your tax the tax revenue will change. Um, but given our in, our initial uh, analysis, this is where we wind, wind up. So we thought Fieldstone was a pretty good comparable. And, and okay. uh, they're, also, they're also close. They're also close and less, and you know, they don't have the community that we're going to be building, and you know, their 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 clubhouse is this itty bitty thing. Uh, they won't they don't get to walk walk the uh, walk uh, along all those paths. I think that if anything, we'll beat Fieldstone, but you know, that's 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 just uh, conjecture at this point. Mm -hmm. How did you uh, hear about the availability of this property? Arv? How did you hear about the availability of this property? And uh, I've been looking for property um, fairly intensely for a number of months. And uh, in my calls, I spoke to one broker who said, oh, I should call someone uh, who's a broker named Ken Ginsburg. So I called Ken um, and he introduced us to this property. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Sheila McCartney. Hi, um, so I'm trying to get a sense uh, of, of your plan and I can see 145 units. And did you have a screen, I thought I saw very briefly on your screen, something that showed sort of where the property lines would be on these individuals or you may not be there yet. We, um, we have, well, we did. We have we did a coverage study where I where I um, put them together, and it looked um, it looked pretty awful. Uh, show it, show it, showing uh, uh, sh what, what what was the name of that developer that um, that everyone hates? Uh, Ticky tacky. It, it looked like that. We don't want to do that. Um, so we're going to create um, uh, homes that are somewhat spread apart, but not too. Um, the idea is in, within the within the green and within the green area to really create a sense of community. Um, we're gonna have uh, little parks. You don't you don't want to keep people too far apart, but you want to keep them far, far apart enough so that they have uh, have their own privacy. Uh, it's really key to the success of this sort of thing to find uh, that happy medium. So uh, unfortunately, the answer is I don't I don't yet have exact lot breakdowns um, because it's going to depend on actually literally where some of these trees are. We're gonna look. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna go out and map it, each individual tree using a GPS mapper and say, okay, well, right here, nothing's going, and so we need to. We're gonna spread out by, that way, and it'll come down to the land itself. But the plan is to put them close enough so that they are comfortable and uh, not uncomfortable. And residential will be approximately. Uh, Joe, what was the square footage you're thinking of? A lot, fifteen to fifteen hundred, eighteen hundred square feet. Fifteen thousand. 15, excuse me, uh, only one zero in there, but yes. Okay, I guess what I'm trying to understand is, so so what we're seeing on this map is streets, and then you yes. had an overlay that had sort of walking and bike. Is there yes. one that combines them both? Let me, um, I'm gonna put that into the uh, deck, but first let me um, just share this screen and use uh, use some uh, some software and bring that up. Are you able to see see the changes I'm making on the screen now? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah exactly. Yep. Forgive me. Um, this software is not is not designed to be. Uh, it's supposed to actually be exported before creating a PDF. So this is uh, hard to see. So let me uh, try to put it all in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will I will um, absolutely fix this so that it it is visible. Um, and actually abuse, um, unfortunately, um, did not uh, predict this question. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's uh, no, you I'm a visual person. I'm just, so we so the reason I'm asking, mm -hmm. um, the reason I'm asking is I, I was trying to get a sense of the citizens of Woodbridge who might want to come and visit. They're not going to be walking through people's yards, obviously. So, so oh, there's going to oh. be some sense of you can uh, come down these streets or the bike paths or the walking paths. Absolutely. Uh, so, um, actually, uh, during um, COVID, I, I actually was down in um, in North Carolina and uh, would go on hikes. And um, on those hikes, um, you were regularly passing behind people's homes, and there there were uh, there were these paths that were very much. It was. It, I did not feel like I was encroaching on on their on their space, and that is that is a core that is a key part of what we're trying to do here. Um, 
with um, let me let me pull, let me pull that away here again. And so, for example, uh, we have a bike path here through this copse of trees. Now that is as people are going through there, they're not going to be you know looking in, looking into someone's home. Um, that and we also are looking into um, all sorts of planting that will create barriers. For example, we think that um, specifically right here, um, we think there can be some additional planting um, because we felt that there was insufficient uh, tree line tree lines right here. And we have a few trees in mind that grow quite quickly and um, are. Uh, Joe, Joe, what was the name of that tree which you're a big fan of? Uh, Japanese cryptomeria. There we go. Uh, that's that's the plan for that. Um, but Alex, Alex, if you would stop right there, um, I can help uh, Sheila. Is it Please. understand? Um, stop. Just stop. Stop moving. <laughs> Don't touch your mouse. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So Sheila, you see where uh, Johnson Road is. Mm -hmm. All right, and you see the bike path running through the copes of trees over to the right there. Mm -hmm. All right, the distance between Johnson Road and that bike path is about 650 feet. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, the housing lots in that area between Johnson Road and that bike path in the copes of trees over there to the right, um, there's two lots uh, back to back. Roughly where the tree line following the stream is, that would be the dividing line between the two lots. Uh, the lot sizes would be roughly 200 feet wide by 325 feet deep, uh, which gets you to 65,000 square feet. Um, and it just naturally, they seem to slot right into the fairways. So your homes there are going to be stuck more or less in the middle of the fairway um, with their driveway coming in off of Johnson. Uh, the backside of the second lot would touch and abut the copes of trees where the bike path is. Okay. The, mm -hmm. the other, the other uh, lot on the front side, which would abut uh, Johnson, the bike path there is built into the 50 foot setback that's mandated under the zoning. So it would probably be within 20, 25 feet of the road, but it would be within that 50 foot setback. So all of the trees that abut Johnson and as it's focused in now on Ansonia, all of those would be standing and staying um, and acting as um, the buffer zone for the bike path and a buffer zone for the homeowner. So we're you know creating green space, putting in bike paths, creating buffer zones and giving everybody everything they could possibly want. One thing to add with the uh, with the uh, bike paths and such, uh, we will not be using asphalt. We're going to use some sort of gravel um, so that uh, you know it, can, it deals with the trees well. It can act better ecologically, um, and also we we found some that has a a, comp uh, a composite inside of it, so it won't uh, drain and just spill on people's property, which is essential. And also, of course, when it, when you know we have a big rainstorm, uh, the water uh, running down the asphalt is. is it's a nightmare. We don't want we don't want people dealing. With it. Right. Okay. I guess I, I imagine at some point we would see uh, a little bit more detail help help the uh, residents sort of understand what you envision here. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, all set, Sheila. For now. Yep. Okay. Thank you, uh, David Vogel. Uh, nothing specific. Just uh, I'll await more detail. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, okay. So I think that the next steps would be to get, first of all, if we could get this PowerPoint sent to the board, you could send it yep. to all of us. So we would each have a copy. Maybe, maybe with some of the stuff added on that came up during the presentation Absolutely. this evening from the board members. And um, then I guess I would call on our town council as to what's the next steps you think that the board should take, or we talk well, again in a couple of weeks or whatever. <clears throat> Well, but, but Beth, the next step would be if we can also have some copies that we can leave at town hall for people to pick up and, and look at um, between now and the next time that there's a meeting, um, that would be helpful. The we next, can send, and, send it out and put it up on the town website as well. Correct, generally. correct, correct. Okay. And, and then the board, uh, the board will uh, decide whether it wants to hold a hearing for the public 
to ask questions, which is what we've historically done with these kind of projects. We'd have, unfortunately, it would be a Zoom hearing, and we'll have uh, the developers, Harvey and uh, Joe, uh, make their presentation to the uh, people who attend and answer questions. And then we, what we did in the past, if the board so chooses to move forward and let this go to a special town meeting, as we all know, the uh, deciding body on the kind of sale of real estate in the town has to be done by a special town meeting and or a referendum. And then and the board will schedule a special town meeting and, and um, what was done in the past, the special town meeting just adjourned it to a referendum on machine votes. Uh, in between, the, um, the uh, Arbor and the town would be negotiating a contract that would be presented at the time the, uh, the development is presented to the town for a vote. So the next, the next meeting, and also we've always had, if the board wants to move forward with this project, and the board will have to take a vote within the immediate future to either do it or not. Uh, we've had uh, representatives of the developer appear before some various town boards and commissions to make a presentation so information can get out to everybody and everybody sees uh, the transparency of what is going to be uh, the proposal in the future. And uh, then we go ahead with the special town meeting. So um, COVID, of course, presents some restrict some issues for us related to meetings and things like that. But I guess we can figure it out as we go along. Yeah, it's, going to, it's going to come down to the Board of Selectmen making a decision whether it, it chooses to proceed uh, with, uh, with, a, with a public hearing and whether it chooses to proceed with a special town meeting. And we can do that rather quickly or, you know, uh, and that would be the next step. Okay. Should we, we should probably get the presentation present, you know, sent to us in a PowerPoint and perhaps discuss it at a future meeting as to how we want to proceed rather than doing it tonight or? Correct. It could be a future meeting or a special meeting, it could be a special meeting of the board. Okay. All right. Anyone want to uh, opine on that from the board? Okay. Oh, I was I was thinking of asking me. I think you should sell it to us, but that's just me. <laughs> Do you have a check? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, I, I, I do. <laughs> so I guess probably we should either schedule a special meeting in a couple of weeks or or we can just do it. A lot of vacations will be finishing up shortly. Um or, you know, we can have another meeting where we just take this up all on its own, which might be appropriate once we get the, you know, plan. I think I th I, my opinion is the depth of the questions and the concerns of the board would be best answered at a special meeting just dedicated to this issue only. Just from the board. Well, yes. well, my, my feeling is this should be added to a regular meeting. Um, I mean, I, I, for one, don't want to have to have a special meeting for this project. Um, this is a, large, a much larger project than we've ever seen. Um, and we'll have to see how this plays out, but I, I don't want to invest in a special meeting for this. And that's my personal opinion. Okay. But just but isn't, that, isn't that reason enough that we should have a special meeting? Sure. Um, Dave, because, uh, you know, this is a very large undertaking uh, and it's a very important issue for the town. Um, you know, given the history that 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 surrounds this, I, I think it's appropriate. Yeah. Well, I mean, given the history that surrounds it, um, <clears throat> I don't see how this is going to meet with, with a lot of popular support. I mean, you have 145 homes here, 108 of which are going to be family homes, which means you're going to have at least 200 kids, which is going to cost you. $3.2 million, you're getting 2.6 in taxes, you're going to get, you're going to be running a deficit of $1.2 million every year on this project if it goes ahead. I mean, that's just, you know, one of the things that I'm, that pops out of me thinking about this. So, um, you know, I, I it, it, it have could be hopeful, but the history of these, these, um, the history of these um, plans usually don't come to fruition, but, you know, see what happens. Um, my, that's, that's my objection to a special meeting. No problem. I just thought it would be better if the Board of Selectmen met by ourselves first to sort of get our Q&As out once we get the 
the PowerPoint um, in, in in our in our hands, where we can actually work with it, and then we all get together as it before we take it to the next level, which would be at a regular board of, board meeting. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just we also have another couple of well, nothing. Never mind. I'm sorry, David. No, no, I, I I misspoke. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, what do the rest of you think, Sheila, Joe, and David, and? Uh, Bye. Go. <laughs> Joe's voting in favor. Um, <laughs> I think. I think my my feeling is that we just go ahead with the special meeting. I'd like to schedule that if everyone is okay with that. I'm going to decide to do that. So Beth, I just had a quick question. You, I, I think you had mentioned earlier that there are potentially other proposals, or did I misunderstand? Not anything that we have in writing, or other than just folks that came to us. And we said, get something to us, and we haven't heard anything. Okay, yeah, because you had mentioned the um, New England Brewing, right, with, with regard to this property, or is it a separate? It's regard to this property, but they have not come forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do, do we have an RFP out on the clubhouse yet, or is that still pending? Not yet. Okay. I don't know where that stands. I know uh, we had a meeting with um, Jim Urbano and a couple of other folks. And I think that they wrote something up, but I'm not sure. So we have a final, we have a, we're approaching a final draft of the RFP okay. and uh, right. we should be ready, you know, pretty soon to send out. I'm sorry, guys, I'm drawing a blank. An RFP for, uh, with regard to what on the Re clubhouse? Request for proposals. Uh, uh, proposals to demolish? To no. buy it. We had a proposal from a, a neighborhood, a group of uh, residents, concerned residents, three or four. Jerry and I and Tony met with them. I don't know if Tony, you were there or not. I'm just, okay. They came in and met with us, and um, they're interested in perhaps purchasing, you know, putting out an RFP, request for proposal for, what is it, five to seven acres of, um, to... This was the petition, right? No, no, it wasn't a petition. It was just an informal meeting where this group of, of uh, residents thought it would be wise to put out an RFP for a possibility of a, a banquet center to see if there's any interest in a restaurant. That mm -hmm. was before um, we just got, we got this proposal. Tony has been working on the RFP with the residents for the last few weeks. I just received what it looks like a, a final draft. I'm going to look at it in the next couple of days. And then it's going to be up to the Board of Selectmen whether you want to send it out or not, or whether you want to proceed <clears throat> further with this proposal that you just heard today. So okay. it comes right back to the Board of Select. Right. Well, that, that's, that's not entirely accurate, Jerry. There was a petition which spurred the interest in having an RFP. So it wasn't a spontaneous you know, group of the community. It started off as a petition which was uh, rejected uh, because it didn't- The um, petition was contrary to the charter and <clears throat> state law. What's that? Yeah, it didn't, it didn't meet certain uh, requirements, but it started off as a petition. I signed that petition, so I should know. No, of course it did, but this is a, this is a, a group that wants the RFP. Doesn't want I'm, I'm just, I'm just com completing the thought here. Okay, so with that... Um, Beth, I, I do have... Okay, I, do have, yep. I have a, a concern or a question about this. Uh, I know these, this process is going to take a while because of the various steps that the town is going to be required to go through. I think that our last over a year now of not really facilitating any ease of public comment has caused a lot of the disruption in the town. Uh, I think that was largely responsible for some of the things at the town meeting. And I'm, I'm concerned that now it seems like we are trying, I don't know, it seems like we're trying to hurry this along in some way. Uh, in August, which is the worst time to try to get extra time out of people, we've already had one special meeting, and I know you asked us to try to keep our, our calendars clear. For me personally, that request came after I'd already booked another uh, direct conflicts with the 25th as, as, as this one, as your next town meeting or your next uh, special meeting would, would happen. And I, I'm willing I, to, I I'm willing, you it. know, I'm willing to do some things to get the special meetings, but, okay. but, uh, you know, is that two weeks notice 
why is that so important? Is it particularly important to this particular project that if we don't I, I can, have an David, answer? David, I can tell you I won't be doing it two weeks notice because I will not be available on the 25th. So Okay, well, it's, it's so it's, it, it's a special meeting yet to be determined. Is that what we're saying? Correct. Yeah. But well, is there some special rush for this? I understand that we need the time to, to go through it, and I agree that it should be the content of a whole meeting, but I would really like for residents to be back from the summer so there could be real opportunities for public comment other than the town meeting, which will ultimately follow. Uh, it, it does seem to me like we, we really <laughs> shut the town out of a lot of our, a lot of the light and sunshine that should attend a lot of our decision making. Well, especially and, and not, not because we're not still online and all of that, but <laughs> Just, it, it, you know, the pandemic, it's it's much more difficult than to simply call another special meeting, that in my is, estimation. That is true. The Board of Selectmen special meeting would only be of us. And then we could have the next regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen, which would be, as you would say, uh, everyone could come because it's a regular meeting. There will be public comment and we will have perhaps our questions. We'll have more information. And then it's at the September regular meeting, which is already scheduled. <laughs> we could do that at that point where people come in and give comments, et cetera. I know it's difficult during the pandemic. It's well, I, yeah, and in my estimation, I think it's particularly difficult if you cannot have an in-person meeting to really gauge the sentiments of the town. I don't, I don't think we're a good barometer of that in this kind of isolated environment. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, we'll see what we can do going forward in terms of scheduling something for just the board. If, if we can't make the date, we'll have to wait until September. That's all. We'll try to schedule a special meeting with just the board. Well, the other consideration is there's no public comment at a special meeting. Right. Well, yeah. that's, we, could, we could spend the time getting our questions answered first and then give more time to the public to bring their questions and answer, you know, get answered. No, that clarifies it for me a little bit. Okay. Let's do it as soon as possible. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Joe. All right. Anybody else have any comments or questions at this point on this? Okay. So we'll we'll wait for the uh, PowerPoint to arrive, and in the meantime, I'll get back to you with some uh, dates. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Alex you, Alex and and Harv and thank you, Joe. So, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. Thank, thank you, guys. All right. Everybody else, stay on. They'll sign off. Right. So let's see after meeting. Thank you. Good night. Stay safe. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Oh, we're up to town council's report, item number 12. Is that correct? Have Thanks. I forgotten anything? We did everything, right? I think so. Jumping all over the place. Okay. We'll go with town council's report. So, Bear, I just wanted to give you an update on the cell tower issue. As you know, there was a hearing held before the siting council a few weeks ago. There's another one scheduled at the end of uh, end of August for the uh, homeowner's attorney to put on a, a uh, presentation. Uh, <laughs> you go, Jerry, you froze. Jerry, you froze again. Wait, is it me? No. <laughs> no, we lost him. Oh. Got right. it. It should take Jerry, Jerry, you gotta start all over again when you come back here. Hold on. Why not? Jerry, you you got to start all over again. Your whole your whole report went up in smoke. Okay, do you hear me now? We do. Don't move. Okay. Start all over again. <laughs> just just to bring you up to date on the cell tower matter. There's a hearing scheduled for the end of the month. The town was um, served with some interrogatories by the signing council, asking about various properties that the town owns and whether those would be appropriate for a tower. Unfortunately, all, most of those properties, if not all of the properties, are subject to conservation easements. This is the elders, elderly piece uh, as an example. And there are specific prohibitions about putting towers on those properties. So we're about to discuss the interrogatories and the responses with 
the attorney who represents the homeowners in the in the in the area, and then we will be filing our answers with the siting council by next Tuesday. So uh, everything is sort of on hold, but there will be a very big hearing at the end of the month. Um, and I think that's all I have. Oh, it's, you've been all made aware of the issue with the um, Amity turf field uh, by some emails that was sent by uh, Chandra Prasad. <clears throat> the state of Connecticut DEP has responded that they are taking a look at her, 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 um, her information and will get back to us. Amity is already um, on notice of what, what she presented. So I'm assuming that they're going to be looking at it and we'll report further as soon as we have more information. That's all I have. Okay, anyone have any questions for Jerry? Okay, thank you so much. Um, item, let's see, the next item is acknowledge receipt of the town clerk's report. I will move that we approve the um, report dated start, starting a new year. So there's only month, one month's worth of uh, distribution report from the town clerk. I'll move approval. Is there a second? Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Any comments or questions on this? All in favor, please signify by saying aye or raising your hand. One. Aye. 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 I got Sheila. Aye. Paul. Okay, great. All right. Thank you very much. That's unanimous. Uh, let's see. Uh, minutes. Or good old minutes. First set of minutes is made at the regular meeting of July 14th, 2021. Um, I will move a couple of votes. Is there a second? Second. Anyone have any comments or questions on the minutes? On the regular meeting? Yes. <laughs> Well, everybody all set? Okay, I'll call the question for approval. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three, four, five. I think we got six. David, uh, aye. Yeah, you're okay? Aye. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Fabulous. Okay, next set of minutes is dated. Nice job, Mrs. Shaw, as usual. Uh, the special meeting for um, Wednesday, July 28th. Um, I will motion for approval. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Anyone have any comments or questions on these? Uh, I have. I have some comments and, and <clears throat> additions. I sent. Uh, I sent an email to Jerry Shaw with my comments. I don't know whether you received it or not. <clears throat> Me. I sent an email to Jerry, Jerry. Shaw. Oh. Yeah, oh. with with my additions to the um, and clarifications to the meetings. Okay. Units of the special meeting. Did you get those? Yes, I did get them. Okay. Did you share them with Beth? Yeah, I, I saw them briefly. Okay. Yep. All right. I, I don't know about, there's a lot of, um, I don't know how specific we have to be in these minutes. What do you think, Jerry? <clears throat> the rule is it doesn't have to be a verbatim recitation of what happened at the meeting. It's just the highlights. Minutes can be very... Um, very brief. Uh, they can go into detail, but there's no requirement to have every single issue that is brought up at the meeting in the minutes. I, I have to go back and look at what you wanted specifically, David, because I'm well, sorry. I, I, I can, you know, just I can I can just let you know here. One of the things I brought up was bringing the life skills program back to the um, old firehouse so that we'd have a, a revenue stream for it. That was part of the original plan for that firehouse. Yeah, and and there as as I think we discussed, Amity is not at all interested. That is completely off the. Sheila's nodding <laughs> from a former. I, mean, I, I think we did um, in our discussion. We we did sort of cover off that the Amity board was had never been presented with that. Right. Yeah, I, th I still think it should be revisited. We could put a sentence in there. Well, you, you what you're saying is ask them. We go back to them and ask them to do this. No, no, this is that's not a he, you, David. Do you want to amend the uh, the minutes? Is that what you're saying? I want I want to add the statement that I made that the original plan was to move the life skills program from the from Alberta to the old firehouse, and it should be revisited as this was stated need, um, as well as a as a funding stream. But then you need to put in the issue that it, you you were told that that's no longer a possibility. So you put the both things together and you put it in the minutes, and we'll be fine. You just say that it, that, that that the mini, the mini meeting also discussed that, as Sheila said, it was not presented to the board, so it was not a not an alternative. 
I, I wrote a letter to, I, if you recall, I wrote a letter to the Amity Board of Ed and the superintendent asking why it was not um, discussed. The response was specifically from the superintendent saying we are not moving forward. It was, or perhaps it was the chairman. I have those that let those letters, but it was basically, I think it was the chairman said, we're not going, we're not taking it up or something like that. It was a very quick, have a nice day. And, and, when, and when was that? Mm, when we when we found out that they weren't doing it for some reason, I did. I think it was January or so. And so my suggestion would be maybe we uh, um, add that add those uh, pieces of correspondence. Just just add those to the record. So Beth, if you could send them to the current sure. board, of sure. because yeah. those of us who are new. Yeah, we we also talked about um, a cheaper alternative to the fireman's shed, like a steel building, and that should be in the minutes. And again, David, that was also uh, discussed by David Stein, who pointed out why it wouldn't work based on requirements, building code requirements, uh, elevators and things like that. And he just stated that it was impossible to do it in that manner that you presented. Well, so yeah, if, you want to put, if, you want, if you want to put both parts of that in the minutes. Can, I guess but you with, with all due respect, I, I don't see why you need an elevator in a one story building. It's the a code. Just, it's the code it's, requires it. It's well, where's the elevator going to go in a one-story building, Jerry? It's no, it's the firehouse. That it's a two-story building. It's not a firehouse. Story. It's a storage shed. Right. It's two stories. It's two stories. We're not talking. Oh, I think we're, we're talking. Talk, we're talking about the storage shed. We're talking yes. about the proposed six hundred thousand plus dollar storage shed, which could be done much cheaper with a steel building. And I brought that up. It should be included in the minutes. And and then you can you can include something about David Stein, the architects yes. and the consultant's yes. response, and you can do it. You can do it that you way. And do that. I mean, that's his opinion. I don't necessarily accept his opinion, but I think the discussion should be included. Okay, we'll add we'll add that to the minutes. So yeah, sure. these minutes have to reflect what happened at the meeting. Okay. So we okay. can. Thank you. Do you want to wait on these minutes to approve them to next month? Then, with those things added, I make a motion to table until next month. So we can see a redraft, I, and and I guess just point of order. Um, typically, when if if um, people want to make suggestions for changes to the minutes, if that could be just boiled down into the sentence you want included, so that the, the board could dispose of it quickly. Maybe I don't know. Well, if that's I, I, I did send that. I sent that to Jerry Shaw. That was that part was taken care of. We just never never made it to this meeting. I saw it this morning or okay. definitely this afternoon. So okay. Well, we did. We didn't, but, Sheila. We didn't yeah, we see don't these minutes. minutes. It's not like we yeah. saw these minutes a week ago. We yeah. saw them yesterday. Right. Yep. So we so saw I, them yesterday. I, so I think that I think that your your uh, comment is inappropriate to this because I don't know how. If you don't read those minutes, the the instant you get it, how you would have time to draft a correction. No problem. We'll table them. So, for the but perhaps I can just clarify. Just. From my experience on other boards, um, when the minutes do come and they're usually just right before the meeting, if a member has a concern, it just bring it up at the meeting rather than contacting staff because I wouldn't, if I did that and you did that and the other person did that and we were all doing that, we wouldn't have the benefit of understanding each other's concerns. I, I'm, I am interested in hearing concerns about the minutes, but I think it's appropriate to talk about them at the meeting itself. And, and so my request is only that if we could boil it down to, I would like page four, second paragraph, I'd like to insert the sentence, whatever it might be, then we could actually vote on it at the met, at the meeting, because we don't want to keep tabling minutes and going back and forth. So it was just a suggestion for uh, how we might handle things like this. Well, you can't have it both ways. You can't say you have to have, you know, the, the, the corrections inserted during the meeting and and then when I when I give them before so that you can put them in the minutes or think about them, you know, they're not, they don't come to the meeting. Um, David, this is Jerry. Yeah. Um, according to parliamentary procedure, if there are corrections to the minutes, they can be submitted ahead of time, but they are not incorporated in the minutes until the changes are made known to the entire body that has to approve the minutes. Exactly. That's why I sent them that's, to you. And I, could not, and I could not do that. Okay. So that's why I sent them to you to send to Beth so that she would know that I was going to bring this up at the meeting. 
Correct. And that was done. I didn't want to blindside her with this. No, it's you did fine. not blindside her with that. That was done. Yeah. So what we should do is, Sheila is absolutely correct. These um, minutes should be tabled. And Sheila, you should give a date, which would be the next meeting. It would be the September. Yeah, well, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, September 8th. Okay. All right. And they'll be considered at that time. Yes, I would like to take that expert advice from Jerry Shaw. Thank you. <laughs> and the way and the way the minutes will appear is I will um, insert David's remarks, and I will also insert whatever a rebuttal to any of his remarks were made at that time. They'll probably be highlighted in yellow. Right. All right. Yeah, that's appropriate. That's appropriate because this we are, is correct. We are impressed with your knowledge of Robert's rules. That's terrific. Okay, everybody comfortable with that? Yep. Yeah, I, I just have one other uh, comment with that regard. I wonder if uh, the Tom Hennick workshop on FOI. I know that he usually talks about minutes. Maybe he could give us some advice about you know how to expedite these kind of conversations. I will ask him in an email to do that. That's a good idea. So when we have that presentation, he'll talk about that. Good. Well, okay. you know, the main thrust of freedom of information is so that things are made public. Totally. And that's what I'm doing here, making this public. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, moving on. Uh, item, we, we got one set of minutes approved. Uh, let's see, the 15, item 15 is the resignations. You have in your packet a resignation from Joyce Savers from the uh, Woodbridge Board of Education. Um, she, uh, we, we accept that resignation with regret. And then we also have in your packet a resignation from Margaret Hamilton from the Library Commission. And um, with that, um, we will move to appointments. We sent these out on Friday, I hope. Hope everybody got it before the weekend, four or five days ago. Uh, the first appointment is to the Woodbridge Board of Education. Are there any nominations to the Woodbridge Board of Education? Beth, before we go to that, I have a question. I'm yes. sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's hard, a little hard for me to get in on this. But I thought we also had received that I thought the town clerk had received an official uh, resignation from the Board of Assessment Appeals from Janet. Uh, Bar Barilari, because she's moving out of Woodbridge. I, I did not know that, David. Did anybody else know that? Jerry Shaw, did you get that? No, I did not. My apologies. We did not know anything about that. Well, I, I only bring it up because, uh, you know, I, I, I was told that that, I, I was told about this by, uh, by uh, Janet, and and she said that she had uh, had uh, notified uh, Stephanie or, uh, about it, you know, the, uh, the town clerk's office. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised not to see it here. And I guess it's just has been miscommunication. But it is somewhat critical because it's a small board that meets Absolutely. in September. Absolutely. And, and we won't have time to appoint anybody else. We have so I'm wondering if we could... If there's any way we could add it to the agenda, because it, there's clearly an appointment that needs to be made before the Board of Assessment Appeals has their meeting in September. We didn't know about it. We don't have anybody to nominate. I guess you perhaps. So I, I do. I do believe it's important to put somebody on, but I don't. I don't believe. I think the Board of Assessment Appeals could meet anyway with their remaining members, who they would have a quorum. I think there's three members on it, or four members, and but, they would have a quorum. So while it should be filled. There's been no notice that there's a vacancy for people to um, make express their interest in going on those boards, that board. Uh, I don't, I never saw the notice that the live, I never saw the notice about GATV or library uh, that that was made public. I, maybe I just missed it. I. I mean, I mean, I knew of some of these things, but I never saw a notice. And the no notice, notice is on is on the agenda today. 
Yeah, David, which I got, which I got Friday. <laughs> um, Jer um, this is Jerry. Um, yeah. The difference here is that the two that we, uh, not Joyce Shavers, now she was elected, so therefore she resigned to the town clerk. Um, and that should have been distributed. The one from um, Margaret Hamilton, that's an appointed position. So that's this is where it it's, runs a little different because an elected a position and an appointed position are handled differently. Okay. But I, I also... I, I also believe if Stephanie got something, she would have brought it to the attention of the first selectman or to Jerry Shaw. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure that she would have kept it yeah, without she, taking she it. Never, she never holds on to these things. They come upstairs if it's an email or even a letter. She sends them right above. So, mm -hmm. you know, well, so did you get a copy of of uh, her letter, David or David? Uh, did I get a copy of her letter? that she okay. sent to Stephanie. Yeah. No, I, did, I, no I, I don't, uh, I did not. I, I heard from Amy Morella and from Chuck Pine and from Janet herself because uh, Janet was also the treasurer of the Republican Town Committee and is being replaced in that position for the same reason that she's moving and, she's, and she has announced that she has also resigned from the Board of Assessment Appeals, which I just assumed that that actually happened. I'm, as you know, I'm not in town, so I didn't really have an opportunity. Mm, yeah, uh, I, finding I, it I, on the weekend. I am in town, and I didn't hear from yeah. anybody. So okay, uh, sorry that that didn't happen. I, in the future, I'll try to make it more. The minute I hear, I'll try to sh absolutely. shoot you an email. I apologize. So it's Janet Barillary, correct? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, well, that's she's moving out of town. That's that's uh, yikes. Well. I will okay. offer. I will offer Beth. I would offer this up that I know okay. that on one of the earlier lists, one of the volunteers that both uh, both town committees had uh, earlier approved before the list was changed. Lin Yang, uh, Lin Yang was uh, was a uh, going to be on a committee, and 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 that she would be a great person on this particular committee because her desire as an unaffiliated voter to serve the town is clear. She's run for office. She's been approved by both parties to be on a commission. And th that might solve the case of this is only, I think, a three-person commission, and I really wouldn't want it to become two. But uh, uh, it's, you know, it's th this is a decision that I think the board will have to make because it is the Board of Selectmen who does approve these these appointments, whether or not we are involved in actually vetting them. Uh, and, you know, honestly, I, I don't know why we would have to wait if we know that she's willing to serve and we approve it any more than I'm going to be expected to approve a bunch of people who I've never been consulted about. So if I can, maybe other people can as well. But David, you can't, the board can't appoint somebody unless somebody resigns. Right now, as far as we know, other than the statement to you that she's resigning, there's no official, you resign by a letter. The town does not have that letter, therefore there's no vacancy, and therefore you can't make an appointment. Okay. I, I'm, I'm only assuming that the town does have the letter and that it's just stuck in, in communication circles. I, I'm, I'm, taking the, I'm taking the resignation at her word. So uh, perhaps if we do a special meeting before September, we can undertake it at that time mm -hmm. on a special meeting. That sounds great. That's a good solution. Okay. All right, good. So with that, we'll move to, we got through the resignations. We have, um, is there a nomination for replacement for um, Joyce Shavers on the Woodbridge Board of Education? Yes, I'd like to nominate Erin Williamson. Her resume is in the, or her bio is in the packet. Um, okay. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Are there and any I would like, I would like to nominate Dan Cowan. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Um, one thing I have to bring up that I found out, 
um, just before we did go forward with this, um, I looked in the Woodbridge Code. What is that, Jerry? Is that the charter or the? the charter. charter. Okay. They're under Section 815, the Board of Education Special Provisions. No, it's 8-9E 8, 8 -8 -E is the section. I was going to go with vacancies on the Board of Education to be filled by the Board of Pursuant. Okay, okay, you're right. Okay, so here we go. 8-9, you said? 8-9E. Okay. A says a vacancy in any elected office or elected board shall be filled by appointment of the board selection. So we got that part done. You're right. And then item E says all appointments made pursuant to this section shall comply with the minority representation provisions of section 9167A of the general statutes. If the person whose failure or ceasing to serve has caused the vacancy in any elective office or upon any elective board is a member of a major political party, then the vacancy shall be filled by a member of the same political party. Any member of the Board of Education so appointed shall serve until the next regular town election. So that, that basically says it has to be a member of Joyce's party. I believe she was a D. What, what, is, what, is, what is Mr. Cowan, uh, Mr. Uh, David? Uh, he's a, he's a, an R. So he's not eligible. He can't. He, he, the, the, the charter says it's got to be the same party on an elected elected position. Fair enough. Okay. I keep this in my pocket. Okay, just in case. All right. So with excuse that, me. Um, Sheila made that motion. Who seconded it? I did. I did. Thank, Thank you, Jim. Yeah. And just Any, to confirm for the record that Aaron is a Democrat. Oh, okay. Good call. <laughs> Thank you. Um, are there any other nominations? Hearing none, I'll close the nominations. All in favor of Aaron Williamson to fill the for the elected term uh, on the Woodbridge Board of Education, please signify by saying aye. 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 Is that unanimous? Yep. Okay, David, 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 great. Okay. I think it is. Thank you very much. All right. I'm having trouble seeing six people arms up at the same time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And next we have uh, Margaret Hamilton resigned from the Board of Library, the Library Commissioners. And um, let's see, do we put nominations for that spot? Sure. I'd like to nominate Ellie Sheehy to fill that role. Her uh, bio statement is in the packet and she is a Democrat. Yeah, is there a second? Second. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, I will close nominations and call the question all in favor of Ellie Sheehy to fill um, Margaret Hamilton's vacancy. Signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, thank you, that's unanimous. Wow, Ellie left as assistant town clerk and she's already on a commission. Mm -hmm. Wow, good for her. Okay, thank you so much. And we will continue with this next month. Um, Lastly, we have, this has been out there for a while, uh, GATVOT Commission to 2025. Are there any nominations yet? Okay, so we'll continue with ha having that out there for now. All right, and we'll, I'll try to track down what happened with the, uh, the resignation of Janet. And, and Beth, one more question for you. Mm -hmm. I may have been mistaken, but I thought the town plan, TPZ was experiencing a vac vacancy at our very first meeting that was going to be considered at a later time. And what happened? Did I miss something? No, you didn't miss something. I missed something. My apologies. We'll get that done. Oh, so that yeah. hasn't been take, dealt with yet? No, I apologize. Okay. I, Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. I'm always assuming it must be my my brain that's going, but no, I apologize. You're, you're still intact as far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, thank you. Uh, moving on, um, are we done? We are done. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Is there a second. <laughs> okay, non-debatable motion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Wherever you are, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.